All right. Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club Stop and Chat. Today, we have a very special, special, <laughs> special returning guest, Mr. Mike Vallely is back with us. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be back. Bro. Good yes. to see you guys. Yeah. In, in the flesh. Yeah. In the flesh. That's right. We did yeah. the, uh, the whole Zoom yeah. Which you know, I, I'm not a fan of this. It's very impersonal, and it's just you can't. We we don't have the vibe. No, you walk in the door yeah, here, we're yeah. like, Mike V is here. Yep. I flipped over a car in the back alley and stuff. Yeah. Like I'm pumped. Yeah. You know? yeah. Damn, yeah. you did that? Yeah, you didn't see me. Oh, how they can miss that? Excitement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Excited. <laughs> he was so a, excited and ran back there and did it. It was real quick. a Hot Wheels <laughs> car, but listen, <laughs> it's. <laughs> But hey, how's everything, dude? Listen, I, we haven't seen you since the move to Des Moines. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to leave the oh, S wow. I saw Kelly. Oh, you I did? I saw yeah. Kelly in Des Moines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, oh, okay. Yeah. The Dew Tour, right? Yeah, and then I saw him out at... Uh, at Jacksonville. At Jacksonville, yeah. Street yeah, League. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. How's the move gone? I, I watched your Instagram post. It seems like you're happy as can be. Oh, yeah. We're we loving love it. it. Yeah, we love it. We've been there uh, a little over a year now. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, we love it. We got a great house, great friends. Perfect. Lots of good stuff happening. You already kind of knew the area though before you moved, right? You, you, uh, had, you it was on your list yeah, of places yeah, I to was, move. I mean, I was a fan of the city. Yeah. But we didn't really. I mean, my wife had never been there until she went there to sign the papers on the house we bought. Wow. So amazing. You know, so that she had a leap of faith there. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. She trusted you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I give her a lot of credit, you know. It's like uh, she was born in California, lived here her whole life, fifty some That's years, tough. you know, fifty years, and um, but she was ready for a change mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. you know, um, we, we haven't really. There's no regrets. We we haven't looked back. Amazing. We, we yes. love it there. Amazing. You, snow and stuff. Even the snow. You like the snow. Yeah. You're not sick yeah. of it yet. No. Okay. No. Okay. Well, like, didn't you have a video last year of skating like in yeah, the snow? In the snow. Oh, yeah. 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 Is that normal right now? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> today today it was like six degrees there. Oh, so, Fahrenheit. Yeah, I I called I called Anne from uh, we were standing on the beach in Redondo Beach. I was oh. standing at the water breaking. I said, "Hey, I'm at the, you know." She's like, "It's six degrees here." <laughs> but you know, Free. the lake is frozen. And street plant. Listen, I saw on your Instagram you got. Some type of award from the city or from the state of De what is going on there? You're already it's getting not ready. You're, you're uh, not even planted there for I, a year, and you're getting awards. The Chamber of Commerce uh, nominated me for uh, Entrepreneur of the Year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow! That's so sick. And I was just like, oh, whatever, you know. But <laughs> but but I have really, um, really, you know, I love the city mm -hmm. and I love the people and I love the other businesses that are there, and so. Um, Instead of just kind of shrugging it off, I've I've said, you know I've kind of let people know about it because um, try to bring more awareness to the city and the other right. businesses. You know, right, if, right. if I if my being there can help in any way, then I'm all for it. That's, that's awesome. incredible, bro! Incredible. That's super sick. How's the street plant going now? Everything good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going. It's still going. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. seven years in. It's, it's, God bless you, bro. We were five years in here, and I'm exhausted already. I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's seasons, and it's uh, it's kind of like the, there's ups and downs. Not yeah. like extreme ups and downs, but there's like times where the energy's higher, and you know. Totally. And uh, I used to get really. Uh, I used. To, I just used to be a workaholic, you know, and and, and it was probably needed in mm -hmm. the beginning of sure. creating the company. But of course, I've really tried to to back off but and, and and balance it but it's not really possible it's either all in or not. you're nothing yeah. you know? right, right. and so that's kind of like uh the times where it kind of uh, where it kind of starts to feel like it drags a little bit it's probably because i let off the gas you know mm -hmm. and uh and then when i put my foot back on the gas then everything starts clicking again so i just don't i don't really know what the answer is mm. i don't know how to manage my time and i don't know how to not go all in on something. I feel you. you know? I feel you. I, I kind of feel the same here. It's like when Roger and I's foot are on the gas, it's going. Yeah, and you can't then, stop us. Yeah, but also there's two of us. So if I let up a little bit, he's full throttle. If he let, you know, vice versa. So yeah, yeah. you guys feed off each other. Yeah, kind of, you know. But um, friendly competition. Business is tough. It's tough, man. How do you feel? How do you find it though? Doing it. 
I mean, I guess you could be anywhere in the country or in the world for that matter. But being here, you know, you were here in like Los Angeles, you had access to, you know, getting boards relatively easy. Now everything's got to be like shipped to you. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, everything had to be shipped to me, even in Long Beach, but uh, it's just yeah. a little further. Right. It adds a little bit more cost to my boards, right. but it's not, it's not a cost that like sets me back okay. so much. I mean, Perfect. it's, we can absorb that cost. Yeah. And then, uh, it's made it a little bit easier for shipping to our customers within the states. Where, you know, being more in the middle of the country yeah. has uh, uh, has taken a little bit of the edge off to go into certain places. More neutral, yeah. yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Um, funny, this leads into right of our one of our Discord. We have a Discord, and we we were like, hey, let's pose some questions to Mike V on our Discord, and. Um, <clears throat> We got one regarding a street plant here. Uh, this is one is from. Um, Ooh, it's. It was all. A it was all a stream. Yes. Uh, is street plant looking for new pros or ams? What's going well, on? Well, they're gonna build a team. It, you know, I haven't really. We've it, we've played around a little bit in that regard through the years, but we've never really gone for that. We've yeah. never really been about sponsoring skaters. Mm -hmm. One because. Um, at the time of the formation of the company, I didn't believe that um, I'd be able to really help anybody in any way. Okay. Mm. And then if I was able to help them, it would just be able to help them get noticed so someone else could sponsor them. <laughs> 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 you know? Train a farm team. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think I think the landscape's changed now. Absolutely. And um, and Street Plant has really spoken to an older skater for the most part since we started it. But I think there's an opportunity now to uh, work with younger skaters yeah. and um, and get more younger skaters riding our boards. So, you know, if if your board company isn't the f first priority for mm -hmm. the skater, if they have other things in place, shoes or apparel or right. beverage or whatever, whatever. Yep, 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 yep. if they have other things in place, then we can just give them a board support them with you know social media advertising or whatever mm -hmm. and uh and also just be there me personally from a mentorship type role yeah um i feel like we have a, actually a lot to offer yeah so sure. totally so it's something going into you know this new year that i've been thinking a lot about mm -hmm. opening that door right um i didn't want to be rocky with tommy gunn <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. For I don't sure, want to be like sure. uh, put it all on the line for somebody <laughs> yeah. and then have it like blow up in your face. Mm -hmm. Right. You right. know, and I just think that 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 w could have been the case year a couple years ago, three four years mm. ago, and I don't feel like that's the case now. I feel like we could just be a part of uh, of a sponsor skater's trajectory without having to be the springboard for everything that happens for them. For right. sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Right. I'm sure now you can find dudes like now that you've been around for seven years. Like you probably have. People like that love your brand and then want to be part of your brand, mm -hmm. and it's, you might be the only one they want to skate for. That's true. Well, you know? and, you don't, and you don't base the brand around them, so like they can ride for you. Then if they leave, it's it doesn't ruin it doesn't hurt your brand. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. You know? right, right, right. Yeah, but I think I just think that there's a, an opportunity now to work with guys who, uh, whether they're just starting out or they're known or they're already pro, mm -hmm. and it and it not be something that is a drain on me or my family mm -hmm. and is just a positive thing where we're in a supportive role, however we can. Right. Uh, especially somebody that's, that's already plowing the earth in front of them, they're already doing it. Yeah. You know? Um, if it was about finding an unknown skater and yeah. developing <laughs> them and sinking money into them, I just... Um, you know, I'm just afraid of like what that leads to, right. and and I have seen how uh, there's really a lot a lot of times um, with myself personally, I've experienced this, and also I've experienced this with my own sponsors through the years, where there's just unfair expectations, you know, right. mm -hmm. right. and it it leads to it leads to just uh, you know good people, good relationships, something going sour, and it's just like what wait what happened, yeah, and why. Leads right. to burnout too. Yeah, I just don't. I'm just not. I was never interested in, in getting into that with Street Plant. Mm -hmm. You know, the one skater we've worked with from the very beginning is Christian Svitak. Um, so he's good. just always been yeah. 
a, a really good friend of mine, and and he had his own board company. He was doing ten thirty one. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he was experiencing everything I just said. I didn't want to do. He was experiencing through ten thirty one. He had brought up so many skaters. He'd gone on so many tours, and you know, oh, you open the door for somebody, and then they walk into the room. They take a shit on the floor. And, <laughs> And you go, hey man, you can't shit on the floor, and they go, fuck you, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, like, and then and then you kick them out of the room and you close the door, and they're like, you're an asshole. Right. Yeah. Like, I opened the door for you, and then you shit on the floor. You don't remember that part. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And you, you know. left, and I got to clean up your yeah. shit. Yeah. And Basically. so and so I mean and and you know it's kind of the way it goes, mm. and 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 he was okay with it. He was okay with it. He just stomached it and moved on and found new riders every time, you know. Yeah. But then when I started street pine, he's like, I just want to be a part of that. Right. You know, he, he wants he, to shit in your room. That's the thing about that guy. <laughs> that's, that guy that guy has never kidding. shit in anybody's room. No, yeah, that's I'm a, just kidding. He, yeah. That's a solid, solid guy. Yeah. Yeah. Never met solid. him. Been a fan forever. Yeah. Love Christmas. Feet and guys. he's mm-hmm. probably uh, I mean, I really respect him. You know, he's tra- he transitioned out of professional skating as as good as you can do it man mm-hmm. you know like it's tough what, it? what does he do now what is he well what's he all about he's a appliance repair service guy oh really uh, yeah okay. and well, that's a trade that he just l- picked up and learned on huh. on his own he just he just decided that was the direction he's gonna go and he just started doing it oh, and uh and, you know he's got a he's got a young family he's got two two kids mm-hmm. wow and uh where does he live now He's in Oceanside. Oh, he's not too far from me. Oh, he's yeah. local. We we talked on getting him on the show. We'll have to do that. Yeah, for you sure. got, he's be, great. Yeah. He's yeah, great. Yeah. You got to get him on. But uh, but yeah, I just I watched him transition from you know active professional skateboarding to the second chapter of his life, mm-hmm. and it was so seamless and done so well. And I haven't really seen that before. <laughs> and I definitely didn't do that. You know? Right, right. So I really respect him. That's you know? amazing. And he's For always sure. been just a solid friend, uh, not just to me, but like he was uh, my oldest daughter, Emily. He was like her her big brother. Amazing. You know? Yeah. Like, well, you, you guys rode for Black Label together, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was really cool. I uh, The way I met him, I was doing a demo with Matt Hensley. Matt Hensley and I got on Black Label around the same time, and we were doing a demo in San Diego, and uh, Christian skated up to me, and he goes, hey, uh, blah, 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 can I, can I skate with you guys? And you know, there's always a local hero guy that wants to skate with you. you know? <laughs> yeah. But he had an energy about him. Like, I just, I, it's, you know, you know, you meet skaters, and you just know, like, oh, there's something different about this guy. He's not the same local hero guy. He's yeah. a, there's something different. Like, <laughs> Him asking me wasn't offensive. It wasn't a bunch of like, oh God, I got to tolerate this for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it yeah. was like, I was like, yeah, you can skate with us. And then uh, he skated and he skated great. And uh, after the demo, he gave me a VHS tape. I mean, it was like 99, 98, maybe 98, end of 98. That. He gave me a VHS tape. We were still doing VHS then. Tail end of that. Yeah. yeah. That is phone was number he still in Ohio right then? Uh, he was, I think, no, I think he was in, he was back, maybe back and forth, mm-hmm. spending time in California, st- time in Ohio. Mm. And he gave me the video, and it was pretty good sponsor me video. But there was a clip in there where he 50-50s this, like, hubba type thing. Lo- it's low, low hubba, and, uh, and pretty long. But there's no, there's no landing room. There's just, like, it's just a sidewalk block. And then there's a wall. Okay. <laughs> and so he 50 50s and slams into a wall. He just slams right into the wall. <laughs> and so I showed the tape to John Lacero. We were sitting down watching it. <laughs> and he goes, Oh, oh you got to rewind that. <laughs> and he goes, He just skated right into a wall. <laughs> he goes, This guy's hot. This guy's hot. <laughs> I was like, we got to put him on the team, man. He's like, yeah, he's on. He's on the team. You know? <laughs> Amazing. That works. That, yeah. Note to self, just skate into a wall. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, it was, it was the, the passion. The it skating was the, into the yeah, wall yeah, yeah. with everything else. It was like what, the way he was putting it down. It was, you know, the thing about Christian is uh, even today when you skate with him, you, you are skating with 14-year-old Christian who loves skateboarding. Right. You know? Yeah, it yeah. just... It just emanates from him, that. uh, and and that's something that really speaks to me that I that I always loved about him. I thought he was special, you know, in that way, and uh, and so when we started Street Plant, and he's like, I want to be a part of it. I was like, Well, dude, 
that's like that's family that's not even like oh some guy i gotta worry about yeah, take care of this guy right, it's just different right. you know that's so sick that's great man. That's, so that's a natural fit then it wasn't even like a, yeah yeah no, i got Ooh. you dude i mean i wish we could do more for him you know but like he's just seems he's, like he's content though oh right? yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's not he's just stoked to be a part of it you yeah, know? yeah yeah that's what you need Right. Yeah, because even if, you know, the thing about that is even if Street Plant goes under tomorrow, me and him are like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we got lots to laugh about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is another question from uh, Shook Knight 91 Any new Street Plant collabs or new artists or new shapes? Well, uh, just yesterday, we dropped mm. uh, a collab with Violent Gentleman Hockey Club. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Violent Gentleman is a really cool company. They're like... Um, Are they based around here? They're in Costa Mesa. Okay. They, uh, they started their company, I think it was around 2000, I think 2011. Hmm. They're doing hockey, which is like a traditional sport, but they took that kind of more like skateboard company, record label, action sports approach to doing a hockey brand. And it's really cool. Yes. And it spoke to me right from the beginning. You know, I'm a hockey, big hockey fan. Yeah. So uh, there was that. But also just the way they did it. And the guys, the guys are really cool that, that run the company. So I've done a bunch of different things with them through the years. But oh, we God. did our first ever skateboard collab. We dropped nice. that yesterday. Mm. Well, I don't know when this airs, but the yesterday from this from actual right moment. On yeah. the 25th. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so it's a, it's a barnyard board. Okay. But the setting is not, the barnyard, it's now wintertime, and the barnyard's a, basically a hockey rink. Oh, sick. Mm. And I, all the little characters have hockey sticks and what? stuff. What? <laughs> How come we didn't see this? I, I didn't know about it. Bro. Did McKee do the graphic? Bro, that's the, the algorithm, man. The, <laughs> the <laughs> algorithm, bro. <laughs> yeah, usually Raj is the first. He'll, he'll, oh, yeah. Bro. I usually He's find that. He'll text me and be like, look, I ordered five of these, bro. One, two, three for the No, half, you guys one, have been supporters, us. man. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's what we do, you know. But that sounds so, so sick. Okay. How does a collab like that happen? Did you reach out to them, or did they reach? Well, out we've to just you? been we've just been friends okay. working together. Cool. Um, I mean, Violent Gentlemen is actually uh, they actually inspired Street Plant in a way because I saw them launch. That's mm. one of the first companies I saw launch on Instagram. Okay, you know, it was 2011. Sure. They launched basically announced who they were on Instagram and built the company on Instagram. Amazing. So I, that was the first time that I, something I, I cared about that I saw that that was possible. Um, you know, maybe sounds stupid. It's 2022. It's like, duh. <laughs> you know? yeah. I think but Instagram it, started right, right around 2010. Yeah. Give or take. So I watched yeah. that happen. Um, That's sick. And, and, and so it was like little things like that. Like when I finally decided to, to branch out and actually do Street Plant, mm -hmm. like I, I had these different things that I had been paying attention to that inspired me in some way. And that, their company was one of them. Um, but yeah, we just we've been working together and friends for a long Sick. time. And awesome. what was the other brand? Oh you yeah, were... so we're working. Uh, we got some boards coming out with Rodney Smith. Oh, and Rodney mm. Smith was my early mentor. He's Still brother? my mentor. He's, he's, my, he's my hero. Sick. A uh, guy, you know, grew up with and took us under his wing and showed us. He showed us the ropes when we were starting out. Um, he's uh, you know he founded Shut Skateboards. He was involved in the founding of Zoo York. Uh, anybody from the Northeast, he's played some sort of some role in their skate career in some For way sure. or another. So um, I always had this. Uh, I always wanted to do something with him because he was. And you know, when he was when he relaunched Shut in uh, the mid two thousands or early, you know, maybe I don't know two thousand four. I'm not sure exactly mm -hmm. when they relaunched it, but he was doing shapes. He was doing shape boards, and nobody was doing them. Mm. Nobody. And he was doing, and I was like, man, this board's got such an energy. He's like, it's a shape, bro. <laughs> I was like, I know. It's like, you know, um, so, you know, that, I, I, I had the same thought process, but I was never able to get any of the companies I was working with to do anything, mm. you know, it's just the play it safe, popsicle sure, sticks. Sure. Um, so when I saw him doing that, that was really inspirational to me. So I always wanted to have him shape some boards because he never stopped shaping boards. And even in the early days of Shut, he was a really good shaper. Okay. You know, just cool. Like yeah, just yeah. put some vibe and some style in there. Yeah. So we got some Rodney Smith shape boards coming. Right. Yeah. And That's we awesome. came up with a really cool. FYI, I just ordered four of those barnyard boards. There you go. Boom, look at this. 
on the Dang, show. Bro. We didn't we ask him for a discount code. <laughs> oh, we're sitting right oh, here. Yeah. I, I use Nine Club at checkout. We're sitting right here. We'll do a Nine Club at checkout uh, <laughs> discount. <laughs> we'll do something. We'll do something. Yeah, that, that's uh, we'll come up with something. Get you guys. We should do mix. a collab board with you, dude. Yeah, what's that? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Ooh, what? <laughs> Barnyard. All of us could be the characters. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, let's that go. would be so fucking <laughs> sick. I would be honored to be on that. It's all board, right? this is it's this is done deal. Straight up. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Done one of my deal. Most favorite Thanks. boards. Bro. What a great meeting. Did you what? have one of those boards? I did. You did. What? I did. The OG. Wait, you had one? The OG. Yes, you did. I did. Oh, I got it from Valsurf. Good old Valsurf had it in Northridge, and I picked that thing up. What was the setup? Uh, fuck. What I think I had, wheels. I think I had some some indies. I'm not sure what size, and probably some. Fuck. Come on, say street razors. I don't know if I had street razors, but th I know those were, those were popular. Um, fuck, I can't recall the wheel. What I year? Just, OJ slime ball. Oh. OJ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What year was the? Did that come out again? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. Okay. Damn, we could do a board with all of us on it, like in McKee. <laughs> yeah, we did McKee. He did the graphic for this. The original, yeah. But yeah. he didn't do this one. No, no. Mm. But we can have McKee do it. Yeah, it's down Look the street. That. Yeah. That's a yeah. tri-lab. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, trouble. that's like... Well, that, I mean, that's on. I mean, as far okay. as I'm concerned, okay. that's Sorry, I, I just threw that out there right yeah. to... We're not trying to corner you into anything here, bro. <laughs> this is natural. Hey, this is natural. Uh, it's, 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 it's what we want to do, is we want to do that's fun it. stuff, yeah. man. Sure, just fun dude. stuff. That's you what know? we want to do, too. Yeah. Man. Fuck. That so the Rodney Smith... Yeah, we'll go. That will go. So Rodney Smith stuff... Yeah. Multiple shapes? I heard you say shape with an S. Yeah, a couple shapes, Sick. yeah. And then, okay. uh, and it, you know, like we kind of like branded it as its own brand within the brand. So uh, Rodney Smith Designs. Okay. So we could just keep going with that too. Oh, nice. You know, he's yeah. the man. He's Dude, the man. Never met him personally, but hear so many stories about him. Yeah. He's a yeah. legend. Yeah. In fact. And we got to get him on the show. Yeah, yeah you Ooh. do. Yeah. Um, Patrick hit us up to try to. I was, uh, I was uh, inducted into the Skateboard Hall of Fame yeah. back in November. <laughs> I didn't. Wow. I didn't go. I was in. I was in Jacksonville with Kelly. Did <laughs> <laughs> you just send a video message or something? No, I didn't. Like, no, hey. no, 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 no. <laughs> but Rodney Smith went, and when I found out Rodney Smith was going, I said, like, "Well, you accept the award, amazing, oh, on your behalf, and That's you sick. keep the award, because the thing about the something like the Hall of Fame mm. is, should I be in it? If if it's if it's real and it exists, I believe I should be in it. Okay. 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 But that, but there's so many other people that will never be in it, that will never be mentioned. Right, right. That should be. I got to give it up to the Hall of Fame because they actually, they really try and cover all the bases, like 60 skaters, 70 year, skaters, yeah. 80 skaters. They, they seem to try and like is there a get limit? a little bit of everybody. Is there a limit to how many people they're putting in there each year? Well, or I don't really know. I never really paid too close of attention, but I think there's classes and yeah. then you're, mm -hmm. you're in a class and then. It might but, also depend on how many tickets they could sell. <laughs> You know, yeah. look, I, I'm not sitting at this table talking to you guys if there's no Rodney Smith. Right. Yeah. Right. For sure. For sure. And not just me. Again, this guy has played uh, uh, an integral role in so many skaters' careers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the award and I don't yeah, care yeah. about the Hall of Fame. Um, but I think his generation and the guys that he looked up to, it that's something that they really value. And so it's like, well... Uh, instead of the trophy sitting in Simi Valley in a glass case, well, it should be on Rodney Smith's mantle. That, that's, that's beautiful. That's because beautiful. it's really, to me, it's really his, it's his award. Right. I second that notion. I'm not too familiar with the Skateboarding <clears throat> Hall of Fame either, but I will say this, that there are non-skateboarders, oh, listen, we're all skateboarders, but there are people who play a role in our being, you know, photographers, filmers, team managers. Oh, yeah. Owners. Ty, Ty like Evans deserves to be in there. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah right? for sure. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, but see, we could we could start a conversation of all the people that deserve to be in there, right. but some of them never will be. And, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and the history of skateboarding. Look, I love the history of skateboarding, and uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of the people that are in the Skateboard Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're a kid on the street with a skateboard, who fucking cares? Yeah. Who yeah, cares about true. who did what back when? You better know, blah, 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 blah. 
Leave the fucking kid alone. Let him skate. There you go. Yeah. You there know? you go. The future is what matters. Exactly. The moment and the future is what matters. Let them be. If somebody cares enough to say hello to me and say, oh, your video and this and that, man, and they're young, yeah, it's nice. It, it means a lot. But I don't expect them to know anything. Right. Yeah, right. Expect, like, you don't know who I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the That's what it's, I it's, say. It's, it's rad, a though, weird. When, it's rad when kids actually start looking back at stuff and figuring out, oh. It is rad, right? It is yeah. cool for I sure. I constantly have that conversation. Like, like some of these new guys, they don't they don't really know anything about fucking ten years ago, mm-hmm. you know, and that's fine. I, it, it is fine, but if they have an uh, a, like an older homie, usually be like kind of k- keeping them hip to game and yeah. just, hey, dude, you should check this shit out. In the Hall of you know Fame, I mean? is it like can you look at it on the website or something like that? I don't know. Man. Like you, you know what I mean? I've like never looked. I, I don't. Know. If I want to look at like who's in the Hall of Fame, I don't. I have no idea. I mean, I have my own Hall I'm of sure Fame people. Rodney Smith yeah. is in the <laughs> Hall of Fame. There you go. That's exactly. all you need to. That's know. all you know. <laughs> But like that's crazy, right? If the kids want to find out, they have to do they have to go physically there to see it, or can the they? Kids don't want to find yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody cares. They want to find out. It's all old guys going in there. Yeah, but it is. It's it's the young. It's old. I mean, that's how I learned the older guys mm-hmm. teaching the younger guys. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And maybe they'll watch the Nine Club or something, and they'll listen to five hours of Mike V and his whole <laughs> story, which. They have. <laughs> they have. They have. And it's a good story. It's a yeah. great story, yeah. man. We'll be one, made, one day made into a movie. Man. You are probably the best storyteller like we've had on the show. It, it, it's true. It's, it's true. really right? true. And he lived it. it. Yeah. Not, now, only, not only is he a good storyteller. Listen, you, you give us this vision in our head when you talk. You talk about a story, and I can picture the story. I don't. Maybe they, this, these people don't have faces, or you know. But I can. No, you like. I'm listening to everyone. I, everyone uh, I've talked to you about has a face. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> but I, I, I know. But like, you're I, if I don't know him, what yeah. he's saying yeah. exactly as you're describing it to you, like you're picturing this I'm moment. Watching, yeah. <laughs> watching the pictures being painted. He's yeah. painting, yeah. bro. Yeah. Mike Ross, he's <laughs> painting. I'm like, whoa. So happy, happy little trees. Just imagine him with I'm the big I'm just so stoked he's here, bro. Yeah. I'm so stoked you're here. So what do you got? So what do you got? What do you got? From? You want another question? <laughs> I got this. Okay, listen, this just goes on to what we we're actually talking about right now. The 859 Don, he says, what are your thoughts on how skateboarding has evolved over the past few years? Because it is going quick. Yeah, it's Things really, are evolving. it really has. Um, it's the, the technical evolve, evolving, but also the consistency. And it's crazy. It's crazy. It's insane. Yeah, I really, um, the, the Jacksonville Street League, that was the first one I've ever been to. Mm. Oh, wow. And uh, I don't know, I just... I just missed them. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's man, I love it. Eye opening. It's though, up, really. Yeah. The the one in Utah was the first one I've ever been to, and I was like, "Dude, I loved it." What? I loved These it. Crazy. Dudes are nerds. dude. They, there was people sitting next to me complaining about the format and this and that. Like the people that probably have been following it or that that know who all the skaters are or something. But I was just like, "Bro, I just love this, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah, totally. It was cool, man." I mean, the cool thing about that is when the contest isn't even going on, how good they're skating. Like, when they're practicing for that one try, they're landing that trick in practice. Yeah. Every it's try. Like, it's yeah. every try. Yeah. And that one try, they maybe don't land it. It's like, I don't know. It is insane how consistent they are with mm-hmm. these ridiculous tricks. Yeah. yeah. And then we had the Dew Tour in Des Moines back. Uh, you were at that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, they had adaptive skating in that, which mm-hmm. was really cool. I love that. And they had... Uh, the women's, uh, we watched the women's park, my family and I, and uh, man, it was just like the, the women got something really cool going on. For sure, they have a, they have a camaraderie and a vibe that is just so cool, and and uh, it just gets you stoked. It yeah. Just gets you stoked. Yeah. But the guys have it too. Uh, at at Dew Tour in Des Moines, I remember watching Jamie Foy right before the final started. Just look, he looked at all the other dudes on the deck. He's like, "Let's fucking do this!" Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like, you know. And I was man. just like, I was like, I was like, I didn't, I wasn't too familiar with him, but I was, I was just standing in the background. I was like, this dude's fucking cool. Right. That's my kind of guy right there. He's so fucking rad, man. And now, now I've paid attention, and I, I saw him in Jacksonville, and I had to tell him. I just walk. I was like, you know, I don't care. I don't care. If I don't care if I'm a kook, a kook or a fanboy. Oh, that's fucking I just awesome. walked. So stoked. I just walked up to him and I said, "Look, man." 
Jamie's probably shit his pants. Like, what no, no. I do? He's probably oh, scared no, or no, he's no. I said, I said, I said, I said, look, man. If I was a kid, just sitting here, just taking this in, you'd be my favorite guy. I'd be you'd be the guy I'm I'm rooting for. In fact, I said. I I am a kid and I am just sitting here and you're the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> amazing. He just has a he has a vibe and an he energy does. that I just dig, man. And his trick selection, the way he skates, uh, he's my favorite. He's yeah, beautiful. Dude. He's got he style. He's got finesse. He's got the consistency, yeah. and he's got gnarly tricks. He's gnarly. The bag yeah, of tricks, he's dude. Gnarly. He's fearless, bro. He's he, fearless. He goes for it because yeah. he knows he can do it, and yeah. that's super special. Bro. Totally. Totally. Yeah. That's amazing. Though. He's cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like it too, man. I mean, like, listen, I wasn't the biggest pro, you know, growing up or whatever, but listen, I give props to where props, you know what I mean? I see somebody, I'm like, dude, I, I pull it, bro, you keep doing what you're doing, man. Like, I just, I, yeah, I feel like I need to tell them, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, dude, you're killing it yeah. you don't want to like yeah, bother no. him but you just want to let him know like hey dude yeah. you're doing a great job and i'm, Bro, like, I'm, I'm a, a fan, fan. Yeah. i'm a fan I'm a yeah fan. yeah i was at tampa pro and uh i was sitting there watching that too i was just like you know just and it was cool man because like i'm sitting there like at, at street league you know i was kind of outside the thing just in the audience but at tampa you know it's tampa mm -hmm. like you're right there in the, in the heat of it you know and I'm, so I'm sitting like right there on the deck and, and dudes are walking by. I don't even know them. Like, yeah, they're giving me that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember I was watching Jagger and he, he, like, he was up on the, on the roll in and he had headphones in and he's holding his phone. And, and, and I was like, I looked at him and I was like, this dude's in the fucking zone. Hold, <laughs> like, I know I've been in the zone. I know what the zone looks like, you know? <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, all these other dudes got to be shit in their pants. Just look at his face. Just by looking at his <laughs> face, you know, the, you know, you know when somebody is for real, right? Like for real. Like I'm not fucking around. I am not playing around. And I was looking. At him, I was like, damn, he's gonna win. And I think he should have won. Hmm. I, he got like third or something. Okay. But who did second, win? Second or third? Uh, dude, uh, put it back. I judge that. Con I can't remember. Oh, I think my head. Shane. Shane, oh, Shane was, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and he was. I mean, dude, geez, he switched I mean, Bigfoot from board of the yeah. rail and his rushing. I, mean, I, I, I <laughs> say, I say, I think Jagger should have won, but not to take, you know, yeah, that's just course. I had to take nothing away from who won. I mean, right. the dude was. Well, let's act. You know what's funny about that is that Jagger wasn't even in Street League before that, and the top seated person that wasn't in Street League got, got in to, from in Tampa, Street League. Yeah. He got in from there and then mm. won the whole championship, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah. So like. That's crazy, right? He didn't win that specific Tampa, but he got the right spot to go to the yeah, next one. Yeah, yeah. Which got him the championship. Together. Yeah. They all came together. So yeah. it's pretty wild. Even the best trick. Did you watch Psycho. all the best trick yeah. stuff? Yeah, man. What the fuck? That was the best trick. That these was guys are insane. I've seen in fucking years. It's insane. And then I watched Tampa Am on the live stream. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. And I was like, oh, man, kids? these pros are crying, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're in trouble, man. Yeah. These the one kids are the coming, man. The one thing I noticed about the kids is that they don't have the nerves yet. I mean, that's like with any new uh, up-and-comer, right, in front of the like the contest. But they got the skills. Yeah. yeah. And when they oh, learn yeah. to tame this, their nerves with that, yeah. wow, yeah. it's going to be unreal. I love it. I love, I love the skate scene right now. Mm -hmm. Who's in it? What they're doing? The vibe, the energy. I love that. Um, that it doesn't matter how sort of big it's gotten. Olympics and corporate America totally in the mix. That the skaters still have a, a camaraderie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That they have a brotherhood, a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. yep. That they're in it together and that they're on each other's side for the most part. You kind of sense that. You feel it. That's the kind of stuff you want to be around. That's totally. what makes skateboarding special. <clears throat> if somehow all of the, the progression and the evolution, that stuff got lost, then it wouldn't be skateboarding anymore. And I'd be like... That's so that, true. Right? That's so yeah. true. It seems like it's the strongest it's ever been. Yeah. As far mm -hmm. as like that. It's always progressing, right? Yeah. yeah. Love that, man. Are you surprised to see where skateboarding is now? I, I, I've, I dreamed all of this. Yeah. <laughs> I dreamed it, man. Like, when we started, we... You know, we were so disrespected. Yeah, yeah. Sure it was did. so hard. It was like we were just grinding against everything. And we didn't want to, you know? It was like, it's a misconception that we were the rebellious ones and that we were looking for trouble. We weren't. Yeah. We loved skating so much. We just wanted to 
we wanted to show people what it could be. Mm. And when they couldn't see it, it was so frustrating and, and heartbreaking. And then suddenly, you know, some concerned citizens pinning you on the ground, some cops got you in a headlock, uh, you know, somebody throwing a milkshake at you, <laughs> you know, and it's like, uh, and, 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 and everything gets tough. It's all a grind, you know, and it's like, it doesn't have to be this. We didn't want it to be that way, mm -hmm. but we cared enough about it. And we loved it so much that we were willing to fight. Yeah. That's like right. we were willing to grind back, you know? And, uh, and I remember thinking, I remember um, when the Future Primitive video came out, uh, Bones Brigade Video 2, Future Primitive, it's one of my favorites. Uh, Legendary. Mm -hmm. When that came out, well, first of all, my, my buddy ordered it from like Skates on Hate or something. I don't know. Like, you know, we ordered it from, uh, from you know, we're in New Jersey. We ordered it from a shop in California and, uh, you know, out of, the, out of Thrasher Magazine, you know, like. Mark the box, tear the thing out. <laughs> <laughs> Get an envelope. Get a mail it. It never like we for it was he ordered it so long ago that we forgot that it, it that he did and that it you know never showed up. We were just going about our business and one day we were at his house at the end of a skate session sure. <laughs> and uh, you know it was like it was I don't remember what time of year it was but it was like it felt like it was getting dark early kind of thing and we were at his house and um, everyone's okay we're getting ready to go everyone's gonna go their separate ways and all of a sudden there's a knock at his door and uh, we're like well, you know what the hell like because if it was anyone we knew they'd be they'd come around to the back they wouldn't mm. knock on the front door <laughs> it was like he was a, he had a back door house and I'm like, what the hell. So he opens the door. It's a UPS man. He's like, "We got a package for you." And I, as soon as I saw the package, I knew it was like the size of a VHS tape. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "That that that's a skate video," and uh, <laughs> so we bust it open, man, and uh, we put it in the v VCR, and the vi the the future primitive starts with like a TV station signing off for the night. It's like um, we're signing off for the night, yeah. and then the, like the national anthem or the, or the yeah the national anthem comes on, right? And uh, as soon as the national anthem started, we were all like sitting down. I was like, everyone stand up, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we were, I was like so excited, you know. <laughs> Take your hat off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, and then the opening montage starts and it was just like, you couldn't believe it, man. Just blown away. So we watched the whole video. It's the first time we saw wall rides and the first time we saw a video of like not as coppice has like two clips in it jesse martinez has like two clips in it so we love the bones brigade but we were looking for those other people that mm. like we only seen a photo of in the magazine and we're like dude that's not as cop that's that's him and he's riding a wall what the hell <laughs> so we had never seen this stuff so as soon as the video ended we all were supposed to go home and eat dinner and and we just grabbed our boards again we took off into the night and it was a school night, and we stayed out all night and just slamming into walls, trying just to trying it. to figure out how to do a wall ride. Like our noses were splintered. The, our boards were just destroyed. Love that. You know, but That's it so was, sick. Like, so yeah, it was, you know. <laughs> That's, Wait, why did I start talking about that? I, I don't uh, know, but I'm fascinated. I, it's, but it, that's what a skateboard video should be. You know, you got out, man. It makes you want to go skate. Yeah, you know, especially you know? when you're when you're a kid. Oh my I remember god! That I was actually like there was time. actually if we could rewind, there was actually uh, something that set up me wanting to talk about that that was going to lead to some sort of point. I was going to. Oh, I well, asked about how you were you surprised about how sk where skateboarding oh, yeah. is now. You talked about yeah. how like we were we rebelled. Yeah. We, okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Thank you. It's, yeah. I really would have been bummed. That was a great story, though. I would have been bummed. I was visualizing the whole thing in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And those kids had faces. They did. <laughs> but I, they were blank in my head. But yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but, but so after I, after I saw the video, I thought, I told my dad, I said this to my dad. I said, Dad, I want to organize something where we get the whole city to watch this skateboard video called Future Primitive. Because if, if, ever, if all the citizens saw the video, then they would understand us. They would appreciate us. Wow. He's like, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to watch that shit. <laughs> you know? It's For like, sure. oh man. But I mean, that was how idealistic I was. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. I was so idealistic about this, man. I loved it so much. I, uh, that's why I became a pro skater. Like, uh, it was that idealism, that energy that led to me be being able to become a pro skater. Right. I. I just wanted to do something for skateboarding. I wanted to move it forward. Mm -hmm. And so when people come up to me, they're like, there's fucking bullshit about these fucking kids that they don't. I'm like, shut up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> we yeah. fought for this, man. We, we wanted to make this happen. Right. It was b back in the day when this didn't exist. I was like, dude, 
it's called evolution, man. It's called progression. You know, I trip out exists. hearing stories about way back, like oh, early eighties, that skateboarding died, or what, I'm like, I can't imagine that actually happening <laughs> because I yeah, skateboarding ever since I've met a skateboard, like you know, yeah. I saw it. It's never left my life, and it's been a part of my life yeah. whole, ever since. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I ex the only thing I experienced was sort of the downturn in the early '90s. Um, when I started skating, it was booming. Uh, it had it had just recovered from its early '80s, late '70s, early '80s death. Um, but the skaters that emerged from that death in skateboarding, well, first of all, Thrasher magazine emerged from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Steve Caballero, Christian Asoy, Tony Hawk, Lance Mountain, Jeff Phillips, the list goes on and yeah. on and on. These are, you know, these were pioneers of vertical skating. And then, of course, the pioneers of street skating. Mark Gonzalez, Tommy Guerrero, Jesse Martinez, mm -hmm. Otis yeah. Coppis, you know. Um, so it'd be really hard after the advent of street skating for skateboarding to completely die. Yeah, yeah. Street skating, you know, backyard ramps and street skating changed it forever. It was no longer reliant on skate parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And corporate corporations. Yeah. You know? Um, and when we took to the streets, we started writing our own rules. And, uh, and so there was a bit of a downturn in the early 90s. Um, but also, you know, anyone who skated during that time period will tell you it's one of the best times in skateboarding. Mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. It was great. Wow. I the way it was. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Discord question. You ready? Wait, hold on. I and I could have, I could have, I could have checked out in the early '90s. Mm. And my career was clearly over. Right. Like, it, you know, this dude came along and <laughs> and, uh, and all of his yeah. friends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all those guys. All those guys. Ethan Fowler For and sure. Weston Korea. Yeah, you know, these guys they, they just kept coming, you know, it was like hit after hit. I was like, I had like I had like maybe like you know, I had my fifteen minutes. Maybe it was like thirteen. I had thirteen <laughs> I had 13, I had thirteen minutes and then it was like Ray Barbie, boom. Yeah. Was, you know, uh Ed Templeton, boom, right. Jason Lee, boom, you know. Matt Hensley, boom! It's like, stop! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but you know, the, all those guys—they're actually—they all were—they were all like the same age. Mm -hmm. But I was already sponsored. I was already pro. I already had a board out, and they all looked up to me, and right, I right. played a role in their skating. And so, you know, it wasn't—it wasn't punches to the sure. face. It was like. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, and and I when I realized that I was like, oh, this is all, this is great, man. This is cool, and I got to watch it, and then uh, and then it just kept going and going and going, mm -hmm. and I just asked myself every step of the way, what role can I play? Right, you know, right. My 13 minutes had come and gone. Um, <laughs> Almost 15. <minutes. laughs> you still got two minutes 15, left, dude. Two minutes, bro. <laughs> yeah. two oh, minutes. Dude. I'm, I'm <laughs> ha I've been maximizing those two minutes. <laughs> but I could see how that could be, a, like, a, like you said, a punch in the face. Like this threat is like, these guys are coming from every, every angle. Every angle. It's crazy, you know, it, it, it could have it could have been perceived really yes. as a punch in the face or as a threat, but right. I never I never did. I was a fan. Right, I was a right. fan, always a fan. I still love, you know. It, it, take it into you know take it into skating with costin for the first couple times and 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 the hype that he had it was like mm. you know costin is the end of you <laughs> was was basically how it was presented by anyone that like knew him it's like oh and here he is and he's the end of you yeah, yeah, yeah. you're you're done you know um and uh and then you know someone like uh jamie thomas coming along mm. wow mm-hmm I remember the first time I skated with Jamie Thomas. I was in San Francisco. I was there with Jamal Williams and a couple yes. other guys. And uh, we, we drove up. Me and Jamal drove up from Huntington Beach, and uh, we met up with some other people, and we were, we were, we were skating up there. And uh, we were at Embarcadero, and then we went to skate some other spot, not that far from there. I don't know the names of the spots or anything, but um, it was these big blue, round blue, like benches or something. Hmm, okay. And most guy, most people were manualing them or doing manual tricks or something. And I was like, I'm gonna 180 that whole fucking thing. <laughs> and I start, I come like down the street like a madman. It's boom! And I, first time, I almost make it, but it, I mean, it's big, it's big. And we, and our wheels had gone, yeah, and then we, our pants went. <laughs> <laughs> so you got little wheels. You got these big, like you know, like uh, not <laughs> aerodynamic pants. Right? They're just <laughs> right. like parachutes, just like grabbing the wind. So it Was got it a lot TV harder. Days or Powell days. 
It'd be like TV. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, uh, and so I, I come back around. I'm going to go for it again. And this kid goes, hey, can I try that with you? And, and just like the story about Svitek, you know, when I met Svitek, can I skate with you in the demo? Yeah, sure. It's some, there's a good vibe. This kid says, hey, can I try that with you? And I was like, yeah, man, of course, you know. And I'm not sure if he did it before me or I don't, I don't you know, that might have stung a little bit. I don't remember the circumstances, but I remember him asking me. And then after the session, he, he handed me a tape. He's like, hey, I want to give you my tape. Now, he didn't give me a tape like sponsor me. He gave me a tape like, this is me. Like, <laughs> me I'm out. not asking you to help me. I'm just showing you what's up. Wow. Right? Okay. So we get his tape and... uh we ended up in a hotel room in San Francisco, and we had a VCR with us, or the room supplied one. Mm. It's just like I don't know how we watch these things. It's <laughs> like uh, it's just like when I tell stories about back in the day in the '80s or something, and making a phone call, and, like, and then I call the guy, and I think to myself, "How did, how I, did call I call the guy? The guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how did that, was it? Was it a pay phone? How did I know the number? Did I have yeah. the number yeah. in my pocket? What, uh, yeah. Just yeah. like get a sheet of paper. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just like someone gave me a tape, and then I was watching, watching it in a hotel room somehow. But uh, but there was a bunch of us. Uh, I think we. We had met up with a bunch of people, and there was a lot of guys in the room, and I put the tape in, and we're all watching it. And when the tape was over, I was like, holy shit, this dude is the real deal. And I was like, yeah, does, is he sponsored? I was starting to think, like, what, you know, how can I get involved in what this guy – and everyone's – and. You know, most of the people in the room were like, no, nah, fuck that dude. <laughs> fuck that dude. <laughs> Take my spot. And I was like, no, and it wasn't even people that I was working with that mm. I was sponsoring. It was mm. just a general vibe. It was like, no, nah, man, he's not that, and this and that, and they're like little chattering. And I was like, oh. he's better than everyone here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they just know it. They don't want, you know, yeah. just, hey, they they're scared. <laughs> I just never had that. And that, so that was Jamie Thomas. I just never had that oh, wow. kind of, you know, like, uh, oh, dude, um, what can I do to throw stones in this road? It was yeah, more like, yeah, yeah. what can I do to assist this person further up the road, you know? Um, and, you know, Jamie is, to me, Jamie's like one of the last great pioneers because there's a certain point where the, the pioneer days are over, mm, you yeah, know? The sure. West has been won. <laughs> the, gr the ground has been plowed. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's even really where he really starts to make a mark in skateboarding. Is a little, it's a little late to even say he's a pioneer. But he did pioneer, to me, he pioneered sort of um, this, it's kind of the identity even that skaters today have. Mm -hmm. It's this um, a, a certain approach, video parts, and um, this kind of uh, just going for it type of thing. Sure. You know, um, I remember <laughs> the day after he did the Leap of Faith, I was with Grant Britton and Ted Newsom, and I hooked up with them to film and shoot some photos. And Grant comes up to me and goes, dude, we were with Jamie Thomas today. He ollied off a building. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And, and people had started to go off some pretty big stuff. I was like, yeah, I know. He, he's, he, you know he's like, no, 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 he ollied off a building. I go, well, how high? And he goes, and, he, and he's looking at this building, and his finger keeps going up and, up, and up. and I was like, get out of here. Get out of here, you know. And, uh, and he's like, I'm serious, man. And, and by the way, he never said that he didn't land it. Okay. He just said that he did it. Mm. And the doing it was enough. That he tried like, it. Right. Like, yeah. The fact yeah. that he tried it. He literally it, ollied off the yeah. building. Yeah. He ollied off the building. Yeah. yeah. And... and you know, I just think it was like, it was, that was a moment, uh, that was a moment where there was a shift, mm -hmm. you know, it was like, okay, he didn't even land it. He tried it. What's possible, you know? Yeah. Uh, skating's only gotten bigger and gnarlier from that day forward, you know? Well, you think about this, like how many tricks are that iconic that have a name that have not even, had, that wasn't even landed? Yeah. Just tells you that, I mean, that's how heavy the dude is. Yeah. I mean, Jamie's yeah. the real deal, man. It's a leap of faith. Yeah. He didn't land it, and it's the most at least he tried. known trick. Yeah. yeah I, I wonder, I, there's not one what trick it like, even close to that. Right. Yeah. Is there anything? I can't think that of hasn't one been trick that yeah. hasn't been landed that's so glorified. Right. You know? I say I say at that moment the clock struck zero. <laughs> you know, it was just like it was a it was a reset. Right. It was a reset. It was like damn, 
the the landscape just changed. Yeah, you know? wow. that's awesome. Go big or go home. Yeah. Hey, speaking of the landscape, I got a great Discord question. Okay, yeah, sorry, I know. No, 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 no. This great. is great. I, 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 I'm really liking this Discord thing, bro. It's it's cool, right? Um, Skate World asks craziest thing you've ever witnessed at the Brooklyn Banks back in the in 1980 to 1990 on a skateboard or <laughs> just I, in general. In general, he didn't know. Uh, he didn't know, but. Because I can imagine back then at the Brooklyn Banks, like shit was, uh, it was going crazy. Well, in the eighties, it was still pretty. Uh, I, well, I, I'll say this: in New York, New York was kind of uh, a haven for skaters because mm -hmm. we actually didn't get really hassled that much. You know, it was it took a, it took a little bit of time for the security guards to you know Figure be told out, right. be told they have to ha hassle us. You know, but if you were just skating on the streets, it was like you were part of the energy of the city. And the Brooklyn Banks were left alone. Right. Like it was our domain. Nobody cared. The only time they cared is if we were jumping out into the street and a car was coming mm. off the Brooklyn Bridge. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that could get pretty dicey. People slam on their brakes, that lose their minds, get out, and then suddenly, you know, 40 skateboarders are attacking them. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I never participated in anything like that, but I, I saw it happen. <clears throat> mm. But I mean, skating wise, I'd say that. Like around 92, 93 into 94, it, that's, when, that's when people really started, like we ollied the wall before that. Right. And then around th that time period, like serious tricks started getting to be done over that wall. <laughs> and so I can't, I don't have a specific trick sure, or a sure. specific skater necessarily. I just remember like that became a, a proving ground that became a place where people went. They they got some trick that they you know they they had this trick on lock, and then if you could do it over the wall at the banks, that was the shit. You're good, you yeah. Know? yeah. And and serious stuff went down. See, I mean, you go back. Um, I don't know what year four uh, four one one started, but I bet you in the ish maybe. Yeah. yeah maybe so I bet 90s. you in like the first couple years of four one one, if you go back and really scour those videos, you'll see some insane shit going down over the Brooklyn Banks oh, wall. Oh, for sure. sure. Dude, for sure. Quim Cardona, Nolly Vario flip. Yeah. Uh, Rob Wells switch tray flip. Costin, Nolly back keel. k listed a bunch of yeah. shit. Yeah. So there's so much, especially in four and ones. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you were saying, like, yeah. they were, they might it, go over the, the fence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true knocked the thing off. yeah but mm. i lived that i didn't i didn't witness it <laughs> <laughs> what what about uh were you i'm sorry i probably should know this to be honest maybe you mentioned it who was the first one to go over that into the street were you over the fence over the wall, wall. over the oh, wall over the wall no no over the wall the first person to ever do it i believe is christian Asoy. Yeah. oh wow. really okay yeah, yeah. That's, that's so weird to me yeah well he did it like it he Woo. he did it in yeah, I'm sure he was 85 yeah. wow 80, it was like crazy. Uh, Ali, guys, no, I'm not saying he doesn't. Yeah, well, I mean, like jumper skills. Really, really, um, he was able to be the first because he was there. Right. Like uh, the skaters in New York, there was a guy Ian Fromm who's in the Future Primitive video. Mm. There's a New York segment in yeah. the video. He does an ollie to rock, like lay back off of the wall, um, which was you know that was probably the highest level that the skaters there were doing, but. You know, information didn't move as fast as it does now. Right. So right, right. the ability to ollie and ollie high, what, and on the move like that, isn't something that necessarily the skaters in New York knew about. Mm. So you know, Hasoy's out in California skating with the best guys, and yeah, he mostly is mostly known as a traditionally a, a vertical bowl skater. But I mean, he's a great all-around skater. Sure. He t he he got the ollie. He got it well enough that, you know, he could be set up to be there to be the first guy to go over the wall, you know? Damn. That's crazy, time, dude. Like, yeah. to think about that, like, I'm going to go over that, dude. Yeah. You would think, like, with Hisoi, like, I'm picturing, like, a demo, you know, and, like, him for the crowd, like, going right. over the wall. No, no, no. You know what I mean? I mean like, he, was there, he was there with the Bones Brigade guys, uh, and Dave Hackett was there, mm -hmm. I think. Um, there was, like, a big, a big thing, a big, yeah, yeah. you know, convergence on New York. Um, and, and they've got that, you know, that was the first time w I lived in New Jersey. I didn't, I hadn't seen the Brooklyn banks, you know, oh, you know okay. I didn't even know it existed until I saw future primitive oh, wow. right. and we saw future primitive was like, we gotta go. I mean, it just, uh, future primitive opened up our region to us. Like we, we suddenly 
you know, it just opened up our, our vision of what was possible, mm. you know, which is what skate video should do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and I was absolutely. thinking you were on around then, but you got on before a public domain. Yeah, no. So uh, Future Primitive came out in 85. I didn't get sponsored till 86. Okay. So, so you're like after that, but yeah, you're so, so locked in. Like, I'm fucking getting on this shit. No, yeah. I was, yeah. I was my first. So I saw Future Primitive. The next Pal Peralta video was Animal Chain. And I'm yes. in that motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> you know? Amazing. Yeah. When did uh, Axe Rated come out? What's that? Axe Rated. Axe Rated. Oh, I that like I think that video. was a that was like a trade show promo yeah. video between Public was, Domain and Animal Chin. Yeah, I think so. I think it was after Animal Chin, maybe before yeah. Public Domain. But it was. But released. I'm not really sure. It was released. Right? They released yeah. it later. Yeah. Later. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to. I'm not the ultimate. Pal I feel like Peralta there were like some kind of skits that were like in Public Domain that were kind of like in there as well oh yeah that's right that's right it's before public domain because mm-hmm. the the woman who sort of hosts acts rated yep. actually introduces my part in public domain yep. there it is there you go oh yeah. okay yeah huh i love that we can connect the dots here man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The nine club you know is what we do <laughs> discord questions are amazing bro love them love them but i want to also get to this newest thing that you have going on it could be include a uh zapato which mm. is uh, <laughs> Spanish for shoe. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. It's, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. You have uh, I have one Spanish with me. You have one. Say, in, yeah. Can you, say, can you say shoe in Portuguese? No, I can't. No. But uh, I mean, they're sold out, so I couldn't get a, a clean new one to show you guys. I love that they're sold out. So I had, hey. I, had to, I had to bring one that I've worn. Let's it's just a little dirty. Bro, so least, I mean, you can see a word it looks good. pretty good. No. But. When was the last pro shoe you had? Oh, I don't know. Um, I had. I think I had my name on a shoe when i was with element okay for a little bit did L- is what is it an element shoe did they have they had a, a shoe division yeah, for a while and that, for there a was bit, pro yeah. riders but okay. it kind of fizzled out mm. and that was kind of the and i had a shoe with a company called servant that was based out of sweden mm. um so they had that okay okay you're probably most your most famous shoe was through etnies i would say yeah right? yeah okay yeah for sure that's yeah. for sure. bulletproof but let's talk about this because this was you got on carry yuma and then decide, and then they gave you a, a pro shoe. Yeah, which I didn't designed. decide. I didn't decide. Hey, well, I'm on. The, give me a pro give shoe. Me a pro <laughs> shoe. <laughs> no, but they gave you a pro shoe. And um, how was the design process with them? Oh, I loved it. Aren't it, they in Brazil also, or do they have offices oh, the co- here? No, the company. The company um, started in Brazil. Yes, two Brazilian founders. Right. Uh, Fernando and David, Mm -hmm. but they moved their operations to Singapore. So the company's based in Singapore, born in Brazil, raised worldwide. Okay. But they're based in Singapore. Okay. And, uh, and it's working with them. has been great. I mean, it's just been so great. Uh, and the process of designing the shoe, um, you know, I, I didn't, when they first said, Hey, we want to give you a shoe. I was thinking like, Oh man, like an old school high top, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of people that follow me, older people, you know, they're like, why didn't you do a high top? Yeah. So, well, I thought about that first. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is I actually that. want to sell some of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I thought, I thought we should stick with, uh, yeah. um, like a sort of modern profile. Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, I did raise it up a little bit. It's a little bit higher than the Katiba pro okay. or maybe a lot of, it's like a mid. You know, yeah, yeah. It's a little lower than a mid, huh? It's like a, yeah, it's not. A, it's not quite a mid. It's yeah. not quite mm. as low as the Katiba. Okay. Um, so it's raised up a little bit, but so a profile sort of is like you know, it looks like a standard mm-hmm. kind of skate shoe, right? For sure. The thing that I that I did aesthetically that really mattered to me is like I really love those old high top basketball shoes. Those were my favorite shoes to wear back in the day. But the thing I loved most about them was when I, you know, when you skate, you look down at your feet. Yes. Right. And I just aesthetically liked the way that the toe looked on basketball shoes. So if you look at this from like, like if you're yeah. looking down on it, it's got that, it's got an old school basketball vibe, you know, yeah. the stippling here. Mm-hmm. It's like just, you know, it's probably not necessary. It doesn't really do anything. Mm-hmm. But to me, it just. Ah, the little yeah, holes. Yeah, the, the little, little holes. holes. Yeah, yeah. It's just cool. Stippling. Yeah. Yeah. You could breathe. I just I just like the 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 down view. That was the one thing I was really aiming for was I wanted it to have a modern profile but have an old school basketball mm. vibe when you look down on it. Even the way the toe cap kind of and and this the line here, you know, yeah. it's kind of old school. I mean, looking down at a shoe is probably the most important thing. 
Because yeah. you got to look at that thing all yeah. day long. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, know we've all yeah. probably ridden some busted shoes. Mm -hmm. And you know, you just don't skate the same. If you look down at no, your no. feet and you're like... Oh, oh it could ruin yeah. your whole day. It can. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You know, a shirt can ruin my whole day. Yeah, If it's yeah. not all of course. Of so I just wanted to, you know, design wise, aesthetically, not mm -hmm. even about not even about the function of the shoe, but aesthetically sure. it, I, it had to have a certain vibe. And then function functionality wise, um, I think uh you know when I did my Etni shoe uh, the main thing was durability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I don't think a, you know, I mean skater I seen kids in the last 15 years skating in low tops you know or low top vans or slip on slip vans ons. and and jumping down huge shit right. and uh whatever that's fine if that's their vibe that's their vibe but i just think if someone's gonna pay 80 some bucks for a shoe it's got to be built to last right yeah, it's got to okay. be you know it's got you got uh, durability is important to me and also I want to protect your feet a little bit, you know? Sure, sure. <laughs> like to try. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sk skating is brutal yeah. on your feet. So that's where, like, you know, putting the rubber toe cap mm -hmm. on there. So some extra durability there. The materials we used, uh, this is a 100% uh, vegan suede. Okay. I think and that's the number one selling point for that shoe. It is. Um, only be it's, but really, Vegan shoes are hard to find. Yeah, but, well, but why use... Um, you know, uh, synthetic materials. If and call it vegan, if you're just, if they, if they're gonna fail and mm -hmm. you're gonna burn through it, then you're not really helping the environment in any way. Yeah, you're and, basically doing fast fashion. Yeah. yeah. So Karyuma developed their own vegan suede, oh. and it's proprietary to them. And this is like three times more durable than regular animal suede. Wow. Okay. So that's wow. the that, that's the main like thing to me is like the durability it's mm -hmm. like we wouldn't have necessarily have used a vegan suede or used a vegan selling point if it wasn't actually functional and durable yeah you know you could say vegan and environmentally friendly but not it's not necessarily if is it really environmentally friendly if you burn through it in two days do you think yeah. uh zero sure. two would still be around if uh that suede existed then what's that do you think zero two would still be around <laughs> if that existed then Dude, zero two was velcro bro <laughs> That shit was a hoax, man. Damn, they were pulling it early stages. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. No, there there's a hoax. The whole thing was a lie. That's it's what the, I'm saying. Yeah, the wool was pulled over mine and that's Ed's what I'm and Sean's. Yeah. I, I can't believe they did it so early on, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> Liars. Oh, fuck. Liars. What was zero two? It was a vegan shoe. It was supposed shoes. to be a vegan shoe and it's like oh, It wasn't a vegan it, but it wasn't a vegan shoe. I did not, didn't I tell this story? Did I already no, tell the story? I don't think so. I don't I've never don't, heard okay, this before, no. so. so okay. what was the deal with zero two? Like why did Okay. ASR. Yep. This guy brings a shoe to ASR, right? It's made of Velcro. And, <laughs> and he's for real. It's the whole thing with Velcro. The and whole, he, he had a Velcro like, lolly patch. You the soul? Kelly. No, no, no. Kelly. The whole fucking shoe. shoe is Velcro, bro. <laughs> so he brings this shoe to ASR, and his concept is that it's Velcro, and you can have these large design pieces with like Charlie Manson's face or a smiley face or um so I don't know patches yeah okay. a piece a peace sign you know whatever and you could cut the piece out and you can decorate the shoe with your vibe gotcha. I, I'm into Charlie Manson which is not a bad I mean, idea yeah, thinking yeah, about yeah, it okay right? yeah time, okay sure. and I, I, I only I keep saying Charlie because he actually had a fucking Charlie Manson patch. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's, that's, that's not that's something I'm not, making, up. I'm not making that yeah. shit up. Okay. That's, yeah. that's what he's going for, yeah. right? So he's got the shoe out there. What's and a little shock value? Yeah, shock value. Yeah. You know, it's is the this, shock did value. Did this guy have a booth? He had a booth at ASR. Okay. okay. Just didn't know if he walked in with Sean a bag. Sheffy. Sean Sheffy yes. walks past the booth and he does a double take. <laughs> and he grabs the shoe. He goes, Oh, is this vegan? And the guy goes, Huh? He goes, Is this shoe vegan? And the guy goes, Yes, it is. <laughs> Wow. And he's like, oh, me and Mike Vallely and Ed Templeton are going to ride this shoe. <laughs> <And> the guy, <laughs> the so you, got, you got on the team because of Sean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, wow. the, guy, the guy goes, oh, Mike Vallely. He goes, yeah, give me his number. I'll, I'll give him a call and we'll get this whole thing sorted out. The guy calls me and he's like, yeah, I've got a vegan skate shoe. <laughs> wow. Okay. Sean was serious, man. He had just gotten into like veganism at the time. Like he was so into it, but he didn't. He doesn't really like vegetables. So, okay. like I remember skating with him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember skating with him, and he had a bag of Lay's potato chips, oh, right? Was... And he's just 
<gasps> and I was like, bro, is that all you eat? And he's like, oh, yeah. I was, I was, like, vegan. I was like, you're going to die. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. and, uh, and I had like, he came to my house and I had like, you know, imitation hot dogs and he's like i disagree with this <laughs> <laughs> but he was mad at me you know? yeah. yeah anyway wait so this is you're not two. killing animals like yeah so what happened so the zero two you guys rode for them is yeah. that the, and then i never even heard of this zero two yeah, thing yeah, it was what year was so, this? so the dude pretty much just pivoted on his marketing strategy he as just, soon as sean he pivoted fucking, he oh, pivoted wow. Came along. Damn. What year was this? What this was, would be ninety two. Okay, so that I was then. fully brand new. I would have not. Yeah, I started skating. I mean, dude, this guy he got the he got the back cover of Thrasher for a while. We had ads, yeah. zero two ads on the back what? cover. What? Oh. It was. Yeah. It was and good. you were so you, for a minute. You were putting patches on your shoe. No. What were you doing? So the patch became an ollie patch. Yeah. It was just black. Oh. So you put a black square for but the you, ollie. Yeah. But it was <laughs> still you just change your patch, whatever. So that way you never get an ollie hole. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was just you were just covering the ollie hole area yeah. all the time. Yeah, we preserved that area a little longer than yeah. you would. We didn't know. We didn't, we didn't know about the 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 patches and the, we didn't know. We thought it was a vegan shoe and that the the patches were made for the ollie. Okay. And we found out. We found all. We found out about Charlie Manson later. Okay. You know? <laughs> we're like, wait, what's this shit? Oh. Wow. Zero so we so once way. we traced once we traced the whole relationship back to the pivot, we were we were fucking out of there, wow. man. Yeah. Well, listen, you don't so want to make like, what, within a year, year and a half. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it didn't, last didn't last long. long. Yeah. You don't want to make Sheffy mad either. No, she, Sheffy wasn't. The, he was like a part of it for like. I think he had an ad, but was, I think he wasn't. He, he just kind of was yeah, that dude involved with Salvage as well. Salvage, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is just an opportunistic guy, you know. Listen, the Velcro shoe, it sounds pretty good, actually. You know, it sounds like it's... It's a cool idea. Well, but, <laughs> you know, with the Crocs, they're putting on their little... Yeah, it's sh- cool. Sh- it's yeah, a cool idea. But Sean Sheffy, Mike Vallely, and Ed Temple <laughs> should have, have had nothing to do <laughs> yeah, with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Did they pay yeah, a little you? history they lesson right you there. Good. Straight up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we, I, we must have been paid. Okay, okay. Dude, Nike should do a, um, a foam posit and call it vegan. <laughs> well, think about the name of the shoe, too. Zero Two. He, he had trademarked Zero Two Air. Mm. Like Air Jordan. Oh, oh, wow. Zero Two. He got... He, this this mm. is the way this person's mm. mind worked. Yeah. Wow. So okay. it was just like... You know, like one of these people like that would today buy up a bunch of website URLs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something's about to blow up. Oh, yeah. make I got this money. one, yep. I got it. Not even to knock the guy or that mentality. I just can't relate. Right. It's not how I. It's not how my brain operates. You're not did, programmed. Did he yeah. still ever uh, continue working on skateboarding, or did he move on? No, no. But um, I think he's a billionaire today. Really? <laughs> so I've heard. Is it Jeff Bezos? No. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Damon Way? No. No. Wow. But I think he's. I think he found the the Velcro shoe <laughs> of the future that that hit. The you know? wow. that hit. relentless yeah. work. Damn. Oh, okay. okay. So good for him. Sure. Back to the uh, <laughs> the shoe at hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, this one doesn't have. Here's any... one thing that I like about Karayuma, Right. Listen, great skate shoe, but they're also doing like the uh, pl- planet stuff. You know, it's like you could uh, if you order a shoe, well, yeah. it trees. comes in the box. Yeah, they but plant it's, trees. But they're they're recycle uh, uh, stuff. A B corporation, certified B corporation. Yep. So it's not a bunch of greenwash. They're the it's only not a state yeah. company. It's B corp. B yeah. corp. I explain yeah. what corp. that is. I don't know. So that means that from top to bottom, mm-hmm. all of their practices are ethical. Mm. You know, from every aspect of what they do. Okay. That they pay pay a fair wage, um, and that they're environmentally conscious and responsible. Wow. And yeah, they're the only skateboard related brand that has that certification okay um it's like it's a Patagon- patagonia is a b corp beautiful. oh okay so okay. It's, it's, doesn't have that. okay yeah. it, so it's um it's the real deal it's not a bunch of like you know mark it's not right. just i mean it is marketing it's a it's a it's part of it but you know you have to think like the company started at a time where as a new company they could rewrite the rules they didn't have old factories and old ways of doing things they started with a concept and their concept was that both Fernando and David, who are the, the founders of the company, the owners of the company, they uh, came from fast fashion. Mm. They had done really well in uh, all kinds of you know fast fashion stuff, right. but they saw the, the, the business for what it was and they did really well and made good money, but they were disgusted at the end of the day with what they were doing and what they were involved in. And they decided to step away from that 
and they started talking. They both worked for different companies separately, and they began talking with each other about what they wanted to do, what their passions were. They both decided they wanted to revolutionize the way sneakers are made. Mm -hmm. And um, being, you know, they love surfing, they love skating, so they wanted to incorporate that into their company. And so they were able to sort of uh, start fresh without any baggage, you know, and, and, and start with an ethical approach right right you know they didn't have to they didn't have to like change their their path because yes. of the pressures of which price spent cost mi these companies millions and millions yeah and millions it, must, of dollars it must be for sure. it must suck right. how long has carry yeah. been around for because I, I know they they were already well established before they even even entered skate yeah well i don't know how i don't know well established but i was aware of them before they entered skate yeah. mm -hmm. i had seen their advertising on uh, social media mm -hmm. and i was like this company's cool i wonder if they have a skatable shoe and i would i had been on their website several times you know considering buying their shoes because mm. i wanted to support them because i just loved what they were about yeah. but i wasn't sure if any of the shoe like i think uh, you know like, I like durability, you know? Yeah. It's like, just because I like something doesn't mean I'm going to spend the money. I mean, I say this, but I used to ride Chuck Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> a lot of shoe goods. So, yeah. So, but anyway, I, I, I was looking for their, I was looking at their shoes, and I thought some of their profiles could be a good skate shoe, but I just never pulled the trigger. I was mm -hmm. like, I wasn't sure. And I also wasn't sure about, you know, ordering shoes online. I just, I, I'm just. I'm I'm old enough to like think like you can't do that. <laughs> you want know? yeah, you want right. to try you want to try them. But they have worldwide shipping and worldwide returns. Mm -hmm. Like they can send you the shoe if it doesn't fit you right, you send it back and, yeah. and in yeah. three days you get the size that fits you. You know, Amazing. so it's like nice. um, you know what the coolest thing they do is. Uh, maybe we talked about this the last time, but the coolest thing is that you could buy one shoe. That's what I, I was kind of crazy. Yeah, that is yeah. crazy for yeah. sure. Oh, because people you're a regular up. footed, you're a goofy footer. That yeah. that. Front shoe's gonna wear out quick. Yeah, I you love get a that. one shoe. I and, love that. And people, I mean, some people have different size feet. Oh, mm. like my yeah. my right foot is a little smaller than my left. Wow, you know what I mean? Like I I I don't know. <laughs> I swear that's <laughs> some. You're getting a nine yeah. and nine and a half. Yeah, yeah. I think that's oh. pretty normal actually. I think. Yeah, I think a lot of. I mean, if you had that, like, we're gonna yeah. get one of those like foot those metal foot things. Oh yeah, measure, yeah. measure your foot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a. I mean, definitely, unless it's just wider for some weird reason. But anyway, I'm sure people have. I know that's a. Pro I've heard left, people yeah. having that problem yeah. before. Yeah. But yeah. and also like the sustainability as a side of it. Like they shipped it to you in the box, yeah. which actually closes and it has like you know normal packaging. The, the packaging zipper. is incredible. It's, yeah, you know, great stuff great like packaging. that. It's like, dude, this is amazing. Like it's a very forward thinking. Forward company. thinking, yeah. right? Right. Socially, so, socially responsible. I love it. Environmentally responsible. I mean, I you know, look when you do business. And you manufacture anything, it's going to have adverse effects, you know, mm -hmm. socially, environmentally. It just is. But, and I think about that with manufacturing skateboards. But I know that skateboarding is meaningful, and it offers people transcendence. Mm. And so, some things are worth doing, and they may have effects, but they bring people joy. Right. You know. Right. It's like you can't turn it all off and just say, well, just stop doing everything. Yeah. But but there's companies that are changing things going forward, and Carrium is one of them. They're just one of those companies that's going to uh, rewrite the whole thing, mm. um, the way sneakers are made. And it's going to be better for the world. Right. It's going to be better for us as humans. It's going to be better for our planet. I love that. I love for yeah. sure, for sure. So how did you... First of all, how did you end up even getting in bed with them? Did you hit them up? Did they hit no, you up? No, or what, was the, what was the no, story? No. Um, Fernando, uh, one of the owners, just loved skateboarding, a fan of mine. Just reached out. Yeah, he's just, you know, they started putting a team together. They, they got a few uh, young guys. Uh -huh. And he, at some point, he felt that, uh, you know, yeah, we can sponsor these young guys, Olympic mm -hmm. level skaters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we're going to be a real skate brand, we need to we need to work with somebody who um, has been there and and helped pave the way, right. just out of respect. And uh, he had a pretty short list, I guess, and <laughs> I made the list, yeah, yeah. and um, and it kind of all just kind kind of came together. That's, yeah, that's it's awesome. Amazing. Is Trevor Coden on? Yeah, Trevor. Yeah, he's ripping right now. Oh, dude. Oh, he's on fire. Ooh, yeah, yeah, he's great. He's great. Oh, God, can I, can I see the shoe, yeah. please? I would love to see. I mean, bro, great looking shoe, man. You know. Wait. So, how many colorways do you have right now? 
in that uh, shoe? There was initially four. Okay. Mm. And I think we're about to drop two new ones. Uh, I was going to say, because the, the paneling's good for the colorways. Well, yeah. Yeah. Velcro. yeah, for sure. The, ah. no, there's no Velcro, no Velcro shoe Velcro? planned. Okay. Um, okay. No, we're just going to be thousand airs, you know. Thousand. <laughs> yeah. If we, uh, we were looking for the billions, we'd probably do the Velcro. The Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, try it out. What uh, uh, cork? Is this cork? The insole? It looks like it. Yeah. How was it designing a shoe with these guys f when they're in Singapore? Well, uh, there's a lot more Zoom than yeah. I hoped to be involved okay. in. Hey, <laughs> I could imagine. I zoomed with I zoomed with you guys. Yeah. And I zoomed with them. And uh, don't anyone ask me no to zoom. No more <laughs> Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but no, it was it was actually the process was so great. It was really enjoyable, and the the very first drawings that I saw were were just incredible. Mm. I, mean, I just uh, it was it's like just first class. They got man. a good team. Yeah, it's just yeah. a great team, great people. Even their shoe, because I went on their website also. The, their normal shoe, which is kind of very. Um, Almost like slip on ish. It's very uh -huh. uh, Chuck Taylor ish yeah, or yeah. Jack Purcell ish. Right. Even that, I'm like, this is a skate shoe. Yeah, that was the that was the one shoe. when they first when I first became aware of them that I was considering yeah. buying. I was like, I really like the they way come it in looks. a lot of different colors, and a lot of fabrics. Yeah, I figured I could also I could, I could just wear them. Sure, you know, not sure. they don't have to be skatable, but right. But even that shoe, I was looking at, I'm like, this should, this, this should be in the skateboard yeah. line. Right. Like, it's fucking Do they have great. any other models skate-wise? Yeah. Oh, CA Low? That was uh, the only time maybe. One? Is it just your shoe and the... the Katiba Pro. Yeah. That's the initial skate shoe. There's mm -hmm. my shoe. And I think they just I think they just released uh, a skateable version of the shoe we're talking about. There you go. Okay. I think they just did. Because it's a good shoe. I like I like those uh, that Jack Purcell look. Yeah, I've that. always liked that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I mean, look, they... they when they started out, it was just about um, getting away from fast fashion. So they went with sort of known, familiar kind of profiles. Right. You know, it wasn't like, there's no secret about that. It's a Jack Purcell looking type shoe, right. but it's made more responsibly, more ethically. I love it. You know, for sure. Um, but now I think, I think, I think now that uh, the skate team exists mm -hmm. and there's a lot of different energies and ideas being put into it i think yeah. from a skate shoe perspective it's just going to continue to evolve and get better and better mm -hmm. and better i think you know the, i like i love the katipa pro i've skated in it i love it i think it's a great shoe, great shoe. i think this is an evolution mm -hmm. for it okay. i think this is a better shoe you know they, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mike v you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. Well, dude, it was crazy seeing uh, how much Karayuma, you've seen him at the contest now. It's all over. And then you got dudes on the the top Podiums. three, yeah. the Olympics oh, yeah. and Street League. Street League. That was Jacksonville, right? It was top three. It was, yeah, uh, it was yeah. all that. Yeah. I was like, damn, dude. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> Those dudes were, Gustavo? <gasps> oh, yeah. Gustavo that Ribeiro. Guy. That guy, bro. Dude. dude. What no, the you hell? guys have... Uh, these guys are gnarly, bro. It's really cool for me because... Um, so uh, they're all so nice, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. I just feel like I'm a part of something. Uh, I think I said this. I know I talked about this uh, on the the last stop and chat. Zoom, yeah. About like, uh, like, finally being a part of like what I consider an elite team, you know, and I get to play a role in that. Now, mm -hmm. my, I'm my my best skating is behind me. There's no doubt about it. But it doesn't matter. It's like okay. uh, mm -hmm. just being able to be elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder with these guys, and 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 also be in a situation where uh, I'm not in competition with them. Like they don't, you know, they're gonna wear this shoe. Whereas when I had previous pro model shoes out, maybe my teammates didn't wear the shoe because they're like, why did he get a shoe? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Sure. And, and and now it's like uh, yeah, it's just different. It's, yeah. it's I, I really I'm I'm really enjoying this season. Of I my can life. tell. Yeah. I can tell, man. I, yeah, I think they're taking pre-orders for the next drop now. Hold on. Jesus. Why didn't someone tell me there's? What is that? I don't know. Lucky spider. Do you have a little ride along a, there? I think it's a little booger. A little booger. <laughs> <laughs> I got nervous and just. <laughs> just you know, like, um, man, I look out that. for look out for your bro, man. I didn't see. I couldn't that. see it from right the here. The microphone's blocking it. Your shoulder mm. sold out. What are we? What are we I don't really. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, that dude, what's going a lot on? of marketing coming from Karyuma lately, dude. Last, no. last year or so, you yeah. Yeah. put a lot of money into skateboarding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a beautiful thing. How can you be mad at a company that's sponsoring skaters and right. helping them live their dreams? They're helping when you you know. 
like all the other companies that have participated, mm. they're uh, enabling skaters to live their dreams, and they're and by doing that, they're helping skating evolve and progress and yeah. get better and better and better. Sure. And they're in it for the long the long haul. You know, it's yeah. not this isn't some you know fly by night kind of thing. Sure, sure. that's good to hear. Yeah. Some companies like that, you know, they want to test the waters. Let me see how this works for like three five years, and if it doesn't work, then right, you know. Yeah, which is also understandable. For sure, it's you business. Know, it's all part but, of the plan. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, crazy. business is business. Like people used to tell me, man, it's just business. I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but I trip out how many people they're really taken care of. It's not just like, oh, we got like six riders and whatever. It's like you got a lot of people on the team. Yeah. They're taking care of all of them. Yeah, it's a real commitment. Yeah, yeah. not to real mention commitment. sponsoring sure. contests like you know Tampa Pro or Tampa. You know, yeah. it's like that. Street leagues, street, yeah, street leagues, league. like yeah. they're they're helping making these things happen, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a, a company that wants to that wants to play a role, and wants to be involved in the future of skating, not just to sell shoes, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to sell shoes, but it's like um, there's a real heartfelt involvement with these with the skaters that are on the team. It's like like the company is behind them, right. like believe in them, That's you dope. know, want That's them to dope. succeed, you know. Um, important. And I feel that I feel that, you know, and I feel really blessed to be able to be a part of something like that mm, and, be, sure. and to also be involved in, in, you know, like I'm at the street league cheering these guys on. I'm just like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, Jamie Foy's out of the finals. Okay, go, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was actually kind of funny. It was like uh, at the last street league, it was the three guys in Karyuma versus Nyjah. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, why I was yeah. like, it's Team Karyuma versus yeah. Nyjah right now. It was, <laughs> I, I thought it was awesome, man. Like, uh, and it was so it was so cool because I was cheering for the for the Karyuma guys because they're my boys. But at the same time, I was like, Nigel, damn, damn. damn, like just watch him. I was like, you know, it was a close one, man. Yeah. It, it, Can't find skills, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 when you're you know like uh, when you're there and you're taking it in, uh, it's almost hard not to root for everybody, you know. Hey, well, you're a great sure. spokesperson. You did a very good live commercial at the Street League. I saw. Yeah. I, was, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, "Damn, he's doing a live right there yeah. for yeah. you, dude." Nerve wracking. <laughs> you did a great job. Pulled it together. Yeah, it's beautiful, bro. Well, congratulations, yeah. man. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. thank you. Pro shoe, Fuck loving yeah. it, loving the company, loving the uh, the team. The shoes originally priced too. I love it's like that, eighty nine dollars, right? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Sustainability. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I like the sustainability. I think the skateboarding needs more sustainability. We've talked about like Dwindle. They've been doing some sustainability stuff mm -hmm. with their glue and bags. Super and Sap. Super Sap and the bags that are uh, de, um, biodegradable. biodegradable. You know, it's just, just little by little. It, Let's it kind of do it's, something. It's going you know? to be little by little. Yeah. And anyone that um, takes a stab and tries to participate in that, mm. Um, and then advertises and markets it mm -hmm. shouldn't be like accused of uh, greenwashing or trying to uh, at least they're trying. Yeah, it's it's right. it's it's all an effort and it's all a change that will that will you know build up together to make a difference in the long run. It's going to take time. This stuff doesn't happen overnight. Absolutely. But you got new companies like Karyuma doing it and and leading the way. It's like it opens the door for everyone else to participate. Right. Um I think it's an exciting time for skateboarding. Yeah. Definitely I too. I would like to see more. But, you know, I also I make skateboards. I run a skateboard company. Mm -hmm. I know how difficult it is. How do you, how can I, you know, I've asked the factory what can we do and it's like we can't do anything you know it's like we, we can't reinvent the wheel now it's crazy you know it's you don't crazy. shrink up your boards right you basically just use the sleeves i do shrink wrap them now i was using sleeves for a long yeah. time but mm -hmm. um but uh it made it really difficult for uh shipping mm -hmm. it's like uh yeah i think i i shrink wrap yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but but i really don't know you know it's like some things i don't have the answers for right yeah i can't even come up with what the next thing should be but there are a lot of smarter people out there that do and are and uh and i'm looking forward to see what mm -hmm. they bring sure so that it's better for all of us you know and right. like we were talking about with the the super sap glue and they use the the, the yeah. bags for their boards that are biodegradable and stuff like that but it's like they are even starting off slow they're just doing like this company doing with this can, and yeah. this company and then slowly bringing it in and then maybe they'll make those kind of bags available for other companies to buy and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And then everybody can kind of get involved and start yeah. doing this thing. Cause yeah, I think plastic Bob, on a board. I was saying like those, board, like those, uh, 
uh, biodegradable sleeves yeah. are like super expensive. See, and they like a... even tried to like order like more of them, and it was still the same price. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Quantity didn't bring the price yeah. down. Right, yeah. right, right. But all these things are going to hopefully change, you know, throughout the years. And you know, it's like when a, the big flat screen TVs came out, they oh, were yeah. really expensive. Five grand, you buy, like yeah, seven hundred dollars. So, but I love to see skateboarding get more and more into the sustainability aspect of it because a lot of it is waste. It's like sure. shrink wrap wheels. This, uh, you know. It's a whole thing. We could be smarter. Yeah. We could be better. We could be more responsible. Totally. In all aspects of our lives. 100%. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Got enough. that right, man. Be the change. Um, let's see. Let's pick out good a good looks, one good here. We uh, we have we just asked our Discord, like, hey, if you had a question you wanted to ask Mike V, what would it be? What would it be? You know? And so, I mean, here's a good one. We don't really, you know, this is a, this is a good time. Uh, this one's from Lewis. It's Lewis Maine. He said... What's the best memory Mike had during the development of any Tony Hawk games? <laughs> uh, Were there any good memories of that? Yeah, yeah. I had to do that thing where you put the, put the, the suit on with the balls. Yeah, yeah. I had, oh, I had wow. to do that. How, that was, now, this is spandex, right? Yeah. This is like how... Yeah, was, spandex. And then trying to skate with these balls. How was that? Yeah, it was, it was cool. I mean, it was <laughs> like, you know, whatever. It just seemed like... But it's so different. What, oh, like, it's like, uh, were you like doing a lot of tricks or just motions or what was it really like? Um, you know, because I had like a sort of the most outside the box type tricks in the video game, uh -huh. you know, that were like, mm. uh, like I had my own tricks in the game, you yeah. know? <laughs> the Mike V shuffle, <laughs> the Mike V boneless, which, you know, what's I, the Mike V shuffle? That's the one where I, like I step off the board and it spins okay. and yep. I run and I jump yes. on it. I mean, the, you know, I, because I was the only person that did these tricks post eighties, um, they attached my name to these things at a certain point, but they weren't my trick. I didn't make up the boneless. I didn't make up that trick. I got that trick from a skateboard video you know, <laughs> yeah. from the 80s. You but know. you were still doing it. But yeah, I, I carried yeah. a lot of this stuff forward, like, you know, like tricks tricks people do today like mm -hmm. that you could get the cover of Thrasher with. Now it's like I did in the 90s and people were like, kook. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Oh, everything's okay these days man yeah everything's yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I, at a certain point i i uh yeah i, I just uh i decided just to do what i like to do and do it and try to take it to the highest level mm -hmm. you know um but uh but for the tony hawk game i don't yeah I, I just i don't know like um the first game i was in was tony hawk 4 and i was a uh this is probably my best memory of okay i was a, a special character like i wasn't advertised as being in the game you had to like unlock, unlock, unlock me, unlock me. Oh. Yeah. That's sick. Uh, yeah so to unlock me you had to get to a certain score or whatever you know so i got the game sent to me after it came out and i put it in i'm start playing but i suck at video games i don't even play them i mean i've only played the tony hawk game one time and this was the one time <laughs> and i'm playing and i'm trying to get to the point where you i can wanna... unlock me but i can't. so i called jason rothmeyer his, you know, my friend, I was like, hey, and he's good at video games. Jason could unlock that. I, I, was, I, I, I was like, hey, dude, come over and unlock me. <laughs> he's all, what? Yeah, so he, he's, he's like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so he comes over and he's like, no, da, 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 da. and he unlocks me. I was like, all right, give it to me. He's like, I'm playing. I was like, give it to me, man. I, like, I get it. I'm, so I wanted, you know, play it on myself. Yeah, I was, I was like, I was like, <laughs> okay you know. that's it that's yeah it. i couldn't do it but um but but see what happened when they made my character they i was goofy foot and i was pushing mongo and so uh <laughs> pick up the phone call tony what so so it be like whatever it's so dumb were but. these the test discs that you were getting or what's that were you getting, like, no a this is game this, this is production, is production. So oh like I was, it was I was at it such last minute. The developers just messed up. They had me the wrong stance, and then they had and me Mongo. push Mongo. Yeah. So, you're, oh, damn. Damn <laughs> so, so uh, for this the next game, we did a we did a skit, and uh, you know I've done a lot of these types of skits, and then they blow up in my face because people think I'm fucking nuts. <laughs> but we did this skit where uh, I go to Activision, and I'm like, "Who's the developer? Who fucking did it? Who put me in the game?" Goofy Mongo, you know, and everyone, this guy here. And then they show me in the parking lot. And this is like at the end of the game. So this would be the fifth Tony Hawk game. Mm. It's in like the credits or something or, or something you unlock. I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't really know. Sure, sure. But it's in there somewhere. And I'm in the parking lot and I smash the guy. Ooh, 
<laughs> Smash the guy's I microphone. smashed the guy's windshield on his car. Like it was like some car they were getting rid of. It's like he's getting rid of that car, so I'm breaking the windows of the car and like, damn, Mike V's really pissed. He's pissed. But uh, but that's probably like the funniest memory from me. working on the game. They put so you. Sick. Goofy Mongo. Goofy Mongo. Wow, I had no, I didn't know that. I I wasn't a, I didn't ever played the game or whatever. But and then they made the skit, yeah, to kind of tie it all together. Yeah, and they hopefully they fixed it. The yeah, they fixed it. Yeah. 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 yeah, they fixed it. Fifth and so, I was in like, number five, still pushing Mongo. It'd be amazing. They switched your stance to regular, but then you were pushing yeah, Mongo. Mongo. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, you know, it was like the the Tony Hawk game was sort of a measuring stick. Like if you were in the game, then oh you God. were somebody. That was know? like a so, stamp. That should yeah. be an option in the games. Like, you're like, oh, I want to just push Mongo. I was like, I want. I was mad, but at the same time, I was like, I'm in the Tony Hawk game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, how could you? Sure. Like, fuck, they fucked up. Yeah. Uh, I'd like be a little tired. Faster. I'd be a little bummed on that for sure. Fuck yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. Especially if the skate. work to get your character and then you do that. For sure. You know, yeah, I was bummed, but you can't. You know, you want to no, be. You, you want to like be in the next one. So exactly. Yeah, like yeah saying, you're, you're trying to be. So I didn't. Game. I didn't really go there and break anyone's windows. I did that when they told me I could. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you, it's that's, better that's that you weren't like publicly like in the game, and then it came out like that. Like you don't like you were a main character. Yeah. And then wait a minute, people thought you went up. People thought that was real. Dude, people think a lot of things are real. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, ultimately, my bad. What is wrong? <laughs> ultimately, my bad. No, ultimately, they're bad. No, Come on, dude. it's like, you should know better. Hey, you right. paint a good picture, man, you know? Come on, bro. <laughs> he does. Jesus Christ. Just being the WWE. Did you do that at all? You're wrestling? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did do but, that. Yeah. Independent wrestling, uh, independent <laughs> like backyard style. <laughs> backyard shit's no joke, bro. They get crazy with that shit. Yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a couple pretty. Uh, Vince McMahon is that calling you up? You're like, we need. No, nah, I never got the call, man. Got the call. <laughs> <laughs> this goes right into it, bro. Oh no. Fade asks, "What's your fondest memory from the Tony Hawk tours?" I think just getting on the Tony Hawk tour was uh, that was definitely. I I. I saw the first year that they did the gigantic skate park tour. I mm. saw it on TV. My wife goes, "Hey, there's a um, there's like skateboarding on ESPN. It's Tony Hawk tour," and I was like, "Oh, another contest? Yeah, what are we watching here?" And I sat down, and started watching. It was demos, mm. and I was like, "Demos? I got to be a part of this." That's <laughs> awesome. <yeah. laughs> the premise of my skate career is the demo. Like that's I didn't make my skate career based on video parts or magazine photos. I had those things. They weren't my focus. My focus was kicking it live, city to city, your parking lot, your strip mall, your skate park, your local skate spot, doing it live in person. And so I see the gigantic skate park tour and I go, I gotta be a part of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tony was skating, uh, he was doing a demo like out in, out in Riverside area or something, right? And I drove out to the thing, and uh, and I climbed up on top of the vert ramp. And his <laughs> demo's ending. I was like, "Hey, man, how's it going?" And I hadn't spoken to him. Uh, I don't think I had spoken to him since maybe I think I called him when he landed a nine hundred. Mm. But I don't think I had a, had a face to face with him since ninety six. Wow. Uh, there was a uh, boycott. We boycotted a contest in Germany. Okay. Oh, the and, one? Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, that's and, right. And Tony Hawk um, was sponsored by Airwalk, and I was sponsored by Airwalk. And Airwalk was the title sponsor of the contest we were boycotting. And Tony Hawk came to me and asked me to call off the boycott. And I said, I'm not, he, I can't call off the boycott. And he's like, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I totally understood where he was coming from. Mm. And I think he understood where I was coming from, but it was a disagreement. Right he sort of pinned it on me that I had the ability to, to call off the boycott. Right. Um, maybe I did, but I didn't see it that way. I saw it as like, we had decided that there's not going to be a contest. And he, and Tony said, well, look, i I have an obligation with Airwalk, and I have an obligation to all these kids that traveled all over Europe to mm -hmm. come see us skate. So I'm going to assemble a group of skaters and we're going to do a demo. And I said, Fine, man. Fine. But it was a... Um, this is all on top of the vert 
Is this all on top? No, of no, this? no. This happened. This happened in Germany. Okay. In a pub. Right. Mm. That was last time he saw him. The last, last time, time I saw, saw him. Yeah. him. Okay. I think. Yeah. Right. So we had, right. and so we didn't really speak after that. It was like, uh, I, I basically got booted from Airwalk because mm. of the, because of the boycott. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. And the boycott was mainly because they didn't change the course, right? There's a lot of things. It yeah, was. Um, what was the main premise behind it? The main premise was that um, the promoters of skateboarding had started to move too far ahead without bringing the skaters along. They began to make decisions on our behalf and for themselves, believing that we were just clowns in their circus. Mm. And it got, it just started to move in a certain direction. We said, no, 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 no. Right. You don't have this without us. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I, and I mean the way you know it changed it really the boycott was important it really it really changed the way skaters are treated at events it's like you can't have security put their hands on us right this has to end right number one yeah. number two uh, you need to provide an area for our guests for our VIPs for our, for industry people that is separate than the general population so that they have a place to go um, in, in the Europe. In the for the contests in Europe, uh, a big problem was the cigarette smoke. Mm. Oh wow, yeah. And they're like, it's Germany. You can't tell people they can't smoke. Yeah, or the, like, those well, arenas would be filled. Yeah, with smoke. Like, well, okay. you need to pro you need to provide an area where we are not subjected to the cigarette mm. smoke. We're you know athletes. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you yeah, know? sure. You know, to some regard, like they're breathing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. literally like LA smog in there. Yeah, right? yeah. it's yeah. crazy. That's insane. Um, and you need to feed us. We have we're going out into the arena that we're performing in and buying hot dogs. Yeah, <laughs> like you need to feed us. Okay, you know you don't have an event without us. Treat us with respect. Okay. Catering. Um, so it wasn't just the event in Germany. It it was all skate events. Got you. We're like it was like everyone and their brother wanted to put on a skateboard contest, and they have a big enough purse. They'll show up. Right. We said no. We won't actually. You better treat us with respect. Right. It was a, um, I think it's a turning point, you know? For sure. And I think it was important. I think we had to do it. But, um, but Tony had a point, you know, um, kids came from all over Europe. They, that was their summer vacation. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a big deal. Right. And he, and being Tony Hawk, he can't let them down. You uh, know, yeah. no one really cared at, you know, if I don't show up. I'm sure the lot of people, yeah, but a lot you, of you people know, want to come see you. I would be uh, bummed if you didn't show up. He had become at that. This was '96. Mm -hmm. Game um, just came out. Like no, yeah. game, no, no, game, no. game's not. Out. Yeah. No, Later. game's not. Out. Yeah. But he knew what was. He knew yeah. who he was yeah. and what was. Yeah, it, it was clear. the The runway ahead of him was lit up mm. for takeoff. We knew it. Everyone knew was it. Come back again. He knew it. Time. He knew where he was going, and he knew that that this could be. I don't. I don't want to make it seem like he like, like it was just self-serving, yeah, yeah, yeah. but more so than what. However, it would be self-serving. He felt responsible. Mm. You know, I as the way I felt responsible to my peers and the future of professional skating. I'm not gonna say he didn't care about that, but he felt responsible to the fans and totally. the skaters, and and so respect that, yeah. yeah. And and so we had a conversation, and uh, I said, well, blah blah blah, and he said, blah blah blah, and. I was like, well, we disagree, and uh, and so I hadn't spoken to him since then. So anyway, you drive. You down. guys were probably in your mid twenties then too, huh? Uh, yeah. So we would have been twenty. I would have been twenty six, and he would have been twenty seven. I guess he's a year older than me. I think, <laughs> or year year or two so older sorry. than me. So. Um, so I drive out to Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're paying the picture, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah what is. Is. Oh. <laughs> I'm up on top of the vert ramp. He's just got done skating. He's like packing his pads in his bag. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, you know, congratulations on everything. Yeah, it's amazing what you, you know, what's been going on. Like, oh, thanks. I, was like, I, I saw your tour. I was like, I got to be on it. And he's like, oh, it's full. Oh, okay. <laughs> like really fast. Wow. Quick, yeah. quick answer. Well, think but you about just it. asked him. You're like, no, I'm... think about it. <laughs> At this point in his career, he is the gatekeeper. He is the door. He owns the door. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's not just it's me bus. he's being yeah. hit up by everybody every direction everyone wants a piece of him how mm-hmm. can they get on the money train yeah. you know right. how can you get on the how can you get in the caboose yeah. mm. you know man i'll shovel the coal what do i need to do <laughs> you know it's like he just Let's he's the like train rolling yeah i was like hey man about that he's like it's full we got everyone okay. we don't need anyone else i was like damn it i'm going over his head Oh, okay. <laughs> Going to ESPN. Wow. Oh my god! I just started. I just started petitioning. <laughs> yes, so I love that. I started petitioning anyone that had a say in it, and it came back to him. And he's like, "I'm not against." Yeah, he's he'd be great on the tour. He'd be great, but you know, how many guys can we have? And mm-hmm. and and everyone, everyone. ESPN, Tony, everyone, they were concerned that maybe I was a bit of a wild card. Okay. I don't, I don't know where they get this from. I don't know where this, co- this stuff comes from. but Marketing. Basically, I would not go away. Okay. I would not stop. Relentless. Asking. Persistent, dude. I was yeah. relentless. Yeah. They said, you could come on like the first three demos okay. of the U.S. leg. We're going to Europe first. You can't come to Europe. Mm. But the first three demos of the U.S. leg. But these were your first three to actually like this is what I changed. So, it's a little sponsor me tape. Yeah, yeah. This is what I can do. So, like let's go. So, fifty two days before the first demo, mm. I'm doing a demo in Houston, Texas, and I fall and um, my toes drive into the ground and I sit on my heel. Oh. And the top of my foot buckles out. Uh, it's a very significant foot injury. It's called a Liz Frank joint fracture. Oh, I've had that. I had that. You too. have? Yeah, my left foot. It mostly happens in car accidents Ooh. or to ballet dancers. Ooh. Uh, was, uh, you know who else? Um, Evan Smith had that too. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, this is, really I've never heard common. this before. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't. I'm the only person. Every time I bring it up, no one knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> very, well, I want to say very cool, but it's not cool. It's yeah. not. It yeah. sucks. Not cool. Yeah, yeah. So my prognosis, I saw a, spe- a foot specialist, um, and I was told, well, you're never going to skate again, and you're probably never going to walk right again, and you're probably going to have deformity in your foot, and, but we won't know any of this until we cast your foot for a month and let the swelling go down, and then we'll do another MRI, and then we'll probably have to, do, then we'll have to cast it again, and then we'll, at some point we'll schedule a surgery. We're going to put some sort of mesh screening kind of, I don't know what it was, some sort of like... Uh, Vietnam era sounding kind of uh, <laughs> situation in your foot, and then then we'll cast you again. You'll probably be in a cast on and off for over a year, Damn. and then we'll know what your situation is. Jesus. And I said, Oh no, man, I'm going on the Tony Hawk tour in, <laughs> in 52 days, bro. You work with me here. He's like, There's no working. He's like, You're not skating. And he put me in a cast. And um, when Ann came to pick me up from the doctor i was sitting on the curb in a cast with like tears yeah and i was like it's over it was just like it's over so there was no surgery you didn't get any surgery though no okay i was i had a uh, the injury was fresh they did an mri they said it's very significant you're fucked mm. uh, go home for a couple weeks then we're gonna do another mri once the swelling goes down then we're gonna schedule a surgery okay so i got home i'm in a cast i'm in a cast for about two days and I told Ann to go to the hardware store <laughs> and get me a saw. Where <laughs> <laughs> was going with that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm cutting this shit off. <laughs> Cast was off. Then I sent her out for a, um, a stationary bike. Okay. Got stationary because my foot only hurt if I flexed my toes, but if I kept my foot flat, I didn't have any pain. Interesting. So I figured I could just. I don't want. I didn't want the muscles to atrophy. I just ride this bike. So I rode a bike for hours. Really? Yeah, just rode the bike. And then I was like, I have nothing else to do. I'm only focused on getting better. Then I sent her out to buy free weights, a whole free weight bench and everything. I mm. never I'd never lifted weights before that. And then I had this weight bench. I was just lifting weights and riding a bike. <laughs> and uh and just mentally thinking, My foot's okay. You're gonna get there. My yeah. foot's okay. And then uh John Lucero called me and he said Oh uh, yeah, Mike. Uh, yeah, we got this black label uh, label kills video. You need to be in it. I was like, I don't know, dude. Like my foot's really fucked. And then I'm going on the Tony Hawk tour. That'll be the first time I skate. He's like, you can't spare a couple days before the tour. Like at least a warm up for the tour. And I was like, ah, okay. So, so 52 days was the Tony Hawk tour. 50 days was I started filming the black label video. Oh my god. <laughs> and. 
you know, I whether I was hurt or not, my plan for the Black Label video was to make a video. I think we talked about this already, mm, right? Yeah, I think so. Me pushing. Pushing around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that yeah, was my plan. That's, right. that's what I was going to do, Any, no matter what. But because my foot was injured, it made it, yeah, that's what you're going to do. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay. So uh, I filmed the Black Label video part, and then uh, I got on a plane. I flew to uh, Dallas, Texas. Got off the plane, didn't know what was going to happen. Rolled into... The, Got on the bus. Everyone was like, "Hey, Mike, <laughs> <laughs> don't fight he's, me. He's here. <laughs> he's here." Uh, went into the first demo, and it was all out. Laid it all on the line, man. Hundred percent. Had a good. <laughs> best. Some of the best game I ever did in my life. Wow. It, I just was an explosion of energy. I did tricks that I had never even done before, like first try, just, it was just <laughs> flying. I was, it's what I was intended to do in my life. Like, it was what I was meant to do, was be on the gigantic skate park tour doing demos. Yeah. It's, it's my, it's everything I'd worked for. You had, you didn't even try to skate before that, except for the pushing around on the, not any, never, no, I was afraid. When did you start to not feel pain when you were bending your toes? I feel you, pain now. I feel pain now. I, I didn't. I had to go on the tour. You never got. You never went back to the doctor. No. Never. Well, I called him. I said, "Hey, I cut the cast off." He's like, "I'll never see you again." <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. I never, never had the. There's foot other lifting. doctors out there. There's I like, never. Yeah, but I was just like. A, I, Dude, that's I was on a, my own path. That's a wow. fractured that. If you don't get that fixed, it uh, just does. Yeah, you're fucked. Kind of. If I didn't get mine, there was like, yeah, you're. You have to do this and able to do what you what, want to do. What did you have to do to get his face? I had surgery. I had to get pins put in and then... Mesh? They, no, no mesh. Okay. No, that, like, mine was the Vietnam era. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were like, they fused the bones together mm -hmm. and then I couldn't do it with the, the pins in there so they took it out and it got better. But yeah, they were just like, dude, you, you have to get surgery on this. So you just and never, I can't believe that you didn't get you surgery. You did your shit and you went out there that. and killed it. You should have got a stationary bike. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, a, dad's, a bench. my dad's an ER doctor. You know what I mean? I went to two different yeah. doctors, and, and you're you're a beast. You're amazing. <laughs> 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 That's gnarly. I just I, I he didn't have it. I I I, I, I visualized yeah. this. I visualized the tour. Right. I visualized. Right. It. I knew I was going to be there, and I knew I was going to skate. I didn't skate at any kind of high level up until the second the first demo started. Oh, okay. and the second I rolled in. It it was I was in my zone. So amazing. And and man, I I just and I and and three demos in, they're like, yeah, you're you're here to stay, bro. I knew um, it. I and yeah, uh, I and, I, and there was a point where Tony was like, uh, like you know, like he's like, dude, like go, like, yeah. do it, man. Like you know, it's just like, uh, like you know, they would announce him last, like, and Tony, ah, but at a certain point, he was like, I "I'm gonna go before you," like, yeah. right? Because I was just like so intense. Like I'd be on the bus, and they'd all be leaving the bus, and <laughs> he'd be like, "Okay, you go last," like you know, <laughs> Tony, Hawk, and Mike V, yeah. you know? <laughs> whoosh, here he comes, like, get yeah. the fuck out of my way, <laughs> you know? Who was all on that tour? Uh, there's so many heavy hitters. I mean, we did so many different tours in that vein but um i can't i i don't want to leave anyone out right. but some of the names are costin mm. steve barra uh, jason ellis <laughs> was on that tour um, matt hoffman rooftop uh so of course tony let's see who else chris markovich was on that tour mm. Mm. It, bam would people cool. come oh bam bam, yeah. bam was on that tour, would people yeah. kind of come in and out as well yeah this there was a long tour you some guys like, didn't like some guys didn't do the whole thing yeah, once yeah, i was okay. on i was i was like were, lifer like i'm in right. like any demo i'm there you how know? many did you do i did like however many we however many we did i don't remember it was a couple many, years a couple, uh, couple years tony hawk tour tattoo at all uh some scars. <laughs> some scars. Um, I still can't believe that you never got your foot fixed and you still feel pain to this day. Oh, yeah, it's a problem. Is the weather affected? Uh, par several parts of my body are affected by weather. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's super gnarly. Yeah, I have an uh, ankle, shoulder, my foot. Um, Jeez. Yeah. Okay. I can uh, relate with that story, though. I didn't go to the doctor when I broke my ankle. And mm. It healed fine, and I'm not having any. I haven't had any, you know. Day one, similar story. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's. Um, I told the doc. I said, look, 
I said, look, I'm unlike anyone you've ever worked with. Before. <laughs> I was like, I'm meet, a beast. meet me halfway. <laughs> well, I was. I mean, I was. I was in a season of my life that, uh, if you could hold on to that, man. I mean, it was just like I. It was, you know, everything. Fire. At, yeah, just everything was was right there. Yeah. And uh, and I just knew it. I, I told the doctor, like, hey, man, just work with me. Just work with me. And he's like, you don't. He's like son you have no idea what happened what you've done to your foot and i was like it doesn't matter i'm going on the tour so help me go on the tour right he's like, i will i can i cannot participate in you destroying your life wow you know? so you know sometimes you got to go it alone <laughs> i tell you what though man sometimes those doctors bedside manners it's like the first thing that they tell you you're never going to skate again yeah it's like dude of course come on. Of course. Or really i've That's heard horrible. it a few times bad. You know? i've heard That's it a bad. few times but then some but then there are other doctors you know like when i broke my arm it was uh you know doctor worked with me and he's mm -hmm. just like ah oh, man we'll get you back you yeah know, you're doing everything you ever did exactly you know? so you know us skaters are different breeds, man. Right. So I yeah. think we're walking when we shouldn't be walking. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel so, like those doctors, like, they understand, like, you broke your shit, but they don't understand the rehab part of it, you know? They don't understand, like, how we are built as skateboarders. Yeah, totally. And the and passion behind that. Like, no, dude, like, I'm going. Like, yeah. I need to do you know it. Most I'll people, hey, to be honest, most people, if they get hurt like that, they usually just stop regardless, so they'd assume... That you're probably not going to do that again. Yeah, that's but true. like, no, dude, this is something different. Yeah, we yeah. are. Yeah. When I when I broke my ankle, which was really bad, I was 35 and significant break to the ankle. Um, Tom Green also broke his ankle, like uh -huh. within days of me breaking my ankle, same break, huh. and he broke his ankle skating like a reissue of my Pal Peralta board. <laughs> oh, whoa. so I'm somehow attached to his <laughs> ankle breaking. <laughs> Uh, and, and and dude, the the rehab and the physical therapy and getting back. Uh, by the way, when I broke my ankle, that was the end of my ollie. Uh, it was just that's the end of it, man. Back I mean, ankle? Yeah, it'd be no front. Front, but hmm. it'd be that's like 2005, and uh, you know I could ollie really high, but after I did my shoulder in in the mid 90s, and then my ankle in the you know, 2005, mm. it was the end of, it. it was like, your arm plays a big role in the yeah, ollie. For sure. And, yep. and your front foot has to roll so that it you does. can ollie. And yeah. my front foot doesn't roll anymore. Wow. So that was the end of my ollie. I mean, I fake it and I I can still, all, you know, it's just not what you it was. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's BS. But, um, but I remember like, it was so hard. It was such a tough process coming back from that. And I remember I saw Tom Green after like a lot of time had gone by. I go, well, how's your ankle, man? He's like, it's perfectly fine. I go, really? Oh, man. He goes, Mike, all I have to do is walk. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, I don't. I'm not a pro skater. I don't have to worry about what you're worrying about. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It's true. Like, he yeah. can still be that? funny with a broken ankle. Yeah, yeah. 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 walk. Yeah, I just have to walk. I don't have to, I don't have to do what you have to do, you know? But I think, uh, so anyway, um, long story long, uh, you know, when people say long story short, it's really it's really a long yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But I think that you know that's kind of like my my memory of the Tony Hawk tour uh, that sticks out the most is like kind of like what I had to go through to mm -hmm. get on the tour. You know, right, right, right. And then when right. I got on the tour, I I just owned it. You, you were just going. Yeah, uh, I love that man. I love that so that rad. you were just hell bent, dead set on getting on there mind over matter no matter what you had no matter what you had to do and then then the real kicker is they were so nervous about me coming and wild card and this guy's could be trouble we don't know what we're getting with this guy it was on that tour that i got in the fight in the parking lot with the four guys oh that was so it happened on that tour i'm here i'm trying to prove that i'm professional and i'm like I'm responsible, <laughs> and, I, and I put on a great show. Well, you know. What, so, what city was that in? Uh, Seattle. Okay. So uh, to be honest, man, I never watched any of those Tony Hawk tour things, but I saw that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't that wasn't part of the tour. <laughs> that, was so, that was Mike being yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so that hap that fight happens, mm. and I get back to the hotel room, and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna get kicked off this tour. <laughs> I am every I am everything they said I was, or they believed I was. Right. I just I just made it all true in their minds, and I'm like I'm I'm toast. I'm toast. 
And uh, I was just, I couldn't even sleep that night. I was just like, I can't believe this. Well, how did this all transpire? Uh, Weren't they messing with the, like... Yeah. Just being dicks? Four dudes picked a fight with us because we were skaters. <sighs> and they got their mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, I mean... And the story, I told you, right? look, 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 I, t- I told you what I had to go through to get on that tour. Yes. And I told you when the tour started that I was in the zone. And I'm coming out of a motherfucking 7-Eleven at 2 in the morning and you're going to start talking shit to me? Right, right. Look at the scabs and scars, bro. Like, who do you... You know, what... Use your mind. You should have you know? just told the ankle story, like how yeah. I got, this yeah. is how I got here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you I'm going to kick you in the head with a Liz Frank joint. <laughs> injury, you know, like, like, anyway. That fight is iconic, dude. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty iconic. Okay, but besi- besides, that, besides, that's not even a violent dude. That's besides, pretty... besides, besides that, it just, it's just, it's, it's another night on tour. It's something that happened. It just happened to get caught on video. Sure, sure. Typical Tuesday night. Yeah. But I'm in my hotel room sweating it out. Like I'm toast, man. Like I'm. They're gonna. I'm gonna wake. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down the there in the lobby in the morning, and it's gonna be bags packed. You're going home. Come down to the lobby, <laughs> and the first person I see is Tony Hawk, and I'm just like, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, that's the greatest video I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> and, <I'm> like, <laughs> and I walk out into the lobby, and all of the execs that were on the like the cameraman, the executive people, the crew, everyone that's on the tour, they're just like. The class. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody shut up these people that talk smack to skaters. You know, amazing. Like, and 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 I should have, I should have, let it be at that moment. Mm. I should have confiscated the tape, and and been like, <laughs> over. when I saw the fanfare, I was like, run it, yeah. <laughs> run it. And and to this day, that's. It's a fine piece of video. Yeah. <laughs> Some of your finest work, dude. <laughs> that's why people love you. That's yeah, amazing. My finest. It's Mike B's greatest hits. We love it. Bro. I would say, I would say that in the proper context, skaters, the skateboard world, what we know at the time, it's... It is what it is. Mm. But once it gets onto YouTube and into general population, and it's, con- it's considered one of the very first ever viral videos. It was it, on the internet it, before YouTube. Yeah. Totally. Then it becomes a different beast. It's not, right. it's, when skaters saw it, they're like, well, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when other people see it, they're like, <laughs> right, right, right. It's just like too many, too, too much noise. Well, it's taken you know? out yeah. of context. They yeah. don't know what's For behind sure. it. You know, yeah. it's just this video. Oh, it's yeah. like skater right. fucking, you know, yeah. Like, and of course, yeah. it's not something I really even, really, people ask me about all the time. I, every now and then I'll, I'll amuse them. With the <laughs> <laughs> but generally I don't talk about it. I don't really care to talk about it. I, Cause I don't like to, um, I don't like to uh, make it, it. Yeah. I don't like to make it seem right. like it's something that I value in any way. Sure. Yeah. But, in the proper context, it it, it is it, it was this thing that was that had its energy and it was it was cool. We knew yeah, yeah, yeah. we knew yeah. mm-hmm. you know we knew what it was. And the fact that you're on that tour and then you're literally getting like a yeah the, the yeah, smoke yeah, yeah, clap yeah, yeah, yeah. that turns into like a standing <laughs> ovation. But but, but really the, my the reason for bringing it up <laughs> is because of the concern that that could happen and yes. then it does right it's right. like i didn't have to by the way i could have just kept walking you know <laughs> yeah. but i was like you said what you say you know <laughs> one of those moments yeah like, i don't should i turn around uh, fuck yeah my foot hurts i want to beat your ass <laughs> yeah. i bet that was actually another kind of relief to the tour also is like you had this like encounter but everybody had your back you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, this. Well, they finally, had, they had my back. Yeah, you know that was I mean? really positive. But, yeah. but, but, really, the fight didn't start with me. The fight started with Alex Chalmers and our bus driver. Mm. I had their back. Okay. Mm. The, right. These guys engaged right. these other people first, and I was like, you, mm-hmm. you, you know, no, no, no. You, you want you want to mess with somebody? You mess with me. Right. <laughs> and they're like, right. they're like, okay, dude, you're gonna fight all four of us. It's like exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's exactly That's what, what I'm, I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see this, dude. I don't think I remember seeing this. You don't know, bro. Little, oh. no. What have we done? Now we just <laughs> dude, like, you like explode. anyone who's never seen it is now gonna watch it. Oh, it let's right make, now. we're go gonna make ahead. it go viral again. One more time. Oh, just, man, really? <laughs> the fact the fact is, you had a great time on that Tony Hawk tour. Yes. I had a great time. That was Definitely. it. You know. Yeah. Two years that thing ran. 
I think so. I don't remember. We 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 it, we did, a, did another tour, a secret skate park tour. After yeah, the that. secret skate park tour. Did you guys ever? You guys went? Did, was it just in the U.S. or did you guys go overseas as well? Um, I I, I started from that time on. I started doing all kinds were, of stuff with Tony. Okay, I would go okay. to like we went to South Africa together to do a skate park opening. Mm. Like I I kind of like uh, I did a lot of stuff with him. Did you ever talk to Tony about that kind of? Butting no. up the heads thing. No, we it didn't, never got brought up. We didn't again. need to talk about mm-hmm. it. We, okay. there's, a, there's an understanding there, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's like I mean, I even feel kind of weird about talking about it in that way here sure, with you sure, guys. Sure, sure. You know, it's like. Um, but it is what it is. You guys happen. are both it, understanding it in that sense. Like you guys, yeah. come on, this is like 20 years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Under the bridge. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just you know, I've I've just always, uh, I mean, I was a Tony Hawk fan the day I started skateboarding. My second board I ever had was a Tony Hawk. Wow. wow. You know, um, we loved him, man. You know, here's a guy. You want, you know, he, he, this road was not paved with gold. You know what I mean? This guy was so uh, shunned and rejected by the generation of skaters mm-hmm. that came before him, they spit in his fucking face. It's you know, crazy. they thought his skating was shit. They thought his tricks were shit. They thought he had no style. And they were so disrespectful to him. He was a little kid, and they spit in his fucking so face. Out. Damn, dude. And then, uh, it, how things work. And then, you know, there's a a, a contest. I think it was, I think it was eighty four or eighty five at Del Mar, and uh, and it was the it was the moment in time where style or tricks. Mm-hmm. Style or tricks, Hasoy versus Hawk. Yep. It's a very like known like Hasoy versus Hawk. Right. It's at Del Mar. That's his local park. That's his stomping grounds. And basically, almost the entire crowd at a certain point turned against him. We're rooting against him, like at his home park. At his home park, like there's a North Cal versus South Cal. There, yeah, there was there was a large convergence of people there that wanted Style to win. Mm. Hasoy had to win because tricks. The tricks that he was doing and the way he was doing them could not become the future of skateboarding. Style had to remain the most important aspect. And here's a guy completely alone, completely alone in the world, dropping into this bowl and winning. Wow. Everybody against him. Everybody. I mean, you talk about going through the gauntlet. Your he- your own heroes, people that you look up to and respect. They're right. Like, Fuck you. <laughs> you know? Crazy. And uh, and he's you know and and he just rose to the occasion. Yeah, man, the person he is, bro. He fucking yeah. yeah. I mean, he wow. never stopped. He never he stopped the rising to the occasion. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, timings, everything. He landed at nine hundred. Yeah. It's like uh, everything that's come to him has he's he's earned it. He's worked for it. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the there's not there's. There would never have been a better person to be our Tony Hawk. A hundred percent. I agree. I he, agree, he, man. He's, he's our guy. Totally. You know? uh, basketball has Michael Jordan. Mm. Hockey has Wayne Gretzky. We have Tony Hawk. Damn sure. and, and we're proud to have I mean, Tony Hawk. Yeah. You know, I put him up there with those guys. Yeah, what yeah. he did, he helped grow skateboarding. He made it. He gave all of us sitting here have the opportunity to make a living in skateboarding mm-hmm. because of guys like Tony Hawk, especially because of Tony Hawk. Um and I'm, he's building skate parks around the country, around the world. He's doing you know? so many things. Yeah. Yeah. He's done. He's done. When you're the best in the world, you have a responsibility, and he's done what you're supposed to do. And that's the point I was trying to make about the 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 demo when mm-hmm. we did the boycott. It's like right. He had a responsibility. He had a greater responsibility than we had. Yeah. Even if we couldn't see it at the time, we kind of could. But he w- He felt that obligation. He knew, yeah. And uh, and you know. Would it would if he would have stood with us? Would it have made our case stronger? Maybe, but it's just one day. Right. He was more future looking. We accomplished what we needed to accomplish mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. And he and he went about making people happy. Wow. Yeah. He's he's a really special guy. A really special skater. He is, man. Yeah. He is. And like I said, proud to have him as our spokesperson, yeah. so yeah. to speak. You know. I mean, anybody best. that knows about skateboarding, that's the first name they bring. Hell up. yeah. 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 Yeah, I, well, I mean, there's different times. Like, uh, there was a time the, during when Muska was the Muska. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, I mean, even like Tony Hawk and me were like, yes, Muska. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, For sure. Uh, we experienced that with Muska. I experienced that a little bit with Jamie Thomas. Mm-hmm. Experienced it with Bam. Yep. You yep, know, yep, even yep. Ryan Sheckler. So oh, yeah. Like, I remember I was at this party one time and I like, Sheckler was like in like a 
like a, like a little like rope velvet off. roped off area, and I was like, "Damn, <laughs> there's Sheckler." And I've known him since he was like five or something. <laughs> but I was still like, "Damn, there's Sheckler," you know. And actually, it was me, Costin, and Barra. Yeah, we were standing there, and I was, and we're, and we're like, we're like in the general population. We're like, "Yeah, Sheckler's over there. There, there he is. Wow, Sheckler. He's roped off. It's cool, man. It's cool when somebody transcends, you know. Or, oh, totally. absolutely, dude. Yeah, it's great. Like you said, Michael Jordan. Uh, the, yeah. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan. They they know who Tony Hawk is. Yeah. Oh yeah, he, like every sure. major. Yeah, you know, across like, the board. Across the board, that's he holds it down, dude. That, that when he did the nine hundred, mm. in the setting that he did it, it was something for the it, for all of us to celebrate, yeah. skaters and non skaters. It mm. was a very special thing, you know. I mean, I remember watching on TV. I like popped out of my seat, man. You know, when I saw it happen, it bridged the gap. Yeah, and it's just like. Uh, and people, oh well, so and so, and blah blah blah, and blah, blah. It's all noise, man. Like he did it. He he had the timing. He had the mm -hmm. the presence mm -hmm. of mind and the ability. And he was in the in the arena when it when yeah, he needed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it was special, man. Special. And and everything that came to him after that, man, was like, pff, yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, he's the man. <laughs> but we knew that. Yeah. Uh, I knew that in 1984. Mm -hmm. I knew he was the man. Right. And uh, and I I've just always had a high high respect for him as sure. we all do yeah no, yep great guy Definitely. great guy mike fallowley man listen man thank you so much for coming <laughs> dude any other stories you want to tell or should we save uh, it for another another trip part? over yeah, here to the the nine show. club i don't know man i just like it's a lot it's a lot and then at a certain point you forget what you talked about i think i've already repeated a couple stories no <laughs> it's all good no. If you did, I'm picturing Someone out them. there didn't hear it. Yeah. Yeah, but then they go back and they watch the five hour. Oh, I already know this story. Yeah, he, his foot buckles and blah, blah, blah. This dude, Chris, asking him the same questions he did on the <laughs> Zoom call. You know, it's like, eh, whatever, It's a little bro. more elaborate. Yeah. A little more, we, dive, we dove in a little bit. But more. no, seriously, though, Mike, th dude, congratulations on the shoe. Thank yes. you. Congratulations yeah. on the Karyuma. Pro model shoot sold out. Can't even get them. You know, let's go. Let's, what are we talking cool, about here? Man. In That's our cool. uh, nine club collab. Oh yeah, uh, street man, plane. We got a serious. <laughs> I hope you didn't forget about that. Two. It's on, bro. <laughs> okay. It's on. Uh, McKee, we're gonna talk to you bro. guys. Should we walk over to his house right now? Uh, yeah, let's he go right around the corner. Let's, knock yeah. on his let's door. go corner McKee now. You know he can be selective. So you guys got a good mm. relationship with him? Yeah, I think. Okay. Man, I think so. Uh, All right. Mark's the type of dude just. Here's an idea. Run with it. Send him an email. Let's see what he does. Let's send him an email. Yeah. 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 Let's maybe not run up on his house yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be so, yeah, there's a lot of us. He'll be so yeah. scared. Well, uh, he, you know, he's he's been he's been so cool about the barnyard because I mean we've done so many things with the barnyard mm -hmm. art and the barnyard the barnyard 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 barnyard. And at one point, after I had done a few runs of barnyards with Street Plant in the early days, I called him up and I go, dude, I I need to pay you. Mm. for this art and he's like it's your board mike and i was like it's your art he's like it's your board you know like i'm not gonna you do what you want to do i love that I'm so rad. and uh it was like a few years ago we actually did like a 30th anniversary barnyard board and he did the art for it so okay. that's awesome and he got paid on that one of course but like he, he's you very know, gracious yeah he just had no like yeah. uh he wasn't making any claims. He wasn't trying to like throw his lasso around it and pull it in for every last penny. He was just like, it's your board, man. You do what you got to yeah. do. And you know, that's the first graphic he ever drew. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, he did stuff like... Uh, for uh, skateboarding. Bike, for a bike company. Yeah, yeah. for skateboarding. Yeah. It was his what? first skateboard graphic yeah. was the barnyard. It's fucking yeah. legendary, bro. That's yeah. such a, such Knocked a strong... Knocked out of the park. First try, Knocked dude. out of the park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First yeah. try, man. Wow. Crazy, bro. Yeah, he dude. killed it. He killed it. Okay. Um, so grateful for that, uh, you know. Like, uh, it's it's always it's always it's never one person. I know. It's always yeah. this convergence. It takes a village, thing. yeah. You know, collective. Yes, it really does. And it really the does. the barnyard. It was Rodney Mullen with the shape concept. Steve mm -hmm. Rocco with the shape concept. Mm -hmm. um, Mark McKee with the art, you know. And then me putting yeah. my name on it and skating it. And totally mm -hmm. helping popularize it. You know, what's funny is Chris and I had. Um, breakfast with uh, Rocco one day and Rocco s said when he got the double tail like first like prototype shapes or whatever he actually approached George Powell and like was like what do you think about these and he's like oh it'll never work and he's like fuck I'm screwed <laughs> <laughs> well, it yeah. turned out to be the best thing ever yeah well uh, it 
it it was it was that sort of all in effort that made it work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you could have had that board maybe. Oh, you have the McKee one there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This yeah. is the reissue. That's the like sitting there yeah. looking at yeah. it all the time. That's the that's the that's the that's the reissue. You that's did. what we did for Street Plant <laughs> yeah. with McKee doing the art. But um, but yeah, it, it was like it was all of those things. Uh, you know, I was at at that moment in time, I had the hottest name mm-hmm. in skateboarding, street mm-hmm. skating. I was the guy, and so me putting my name on the board. McKee doing that art, Rodney and Steve playing the role they played. It just was like, it was teed up. Yeah. It was yeah. teed up, you know. And uh, people are always like, there was all their double tail and vision and the, 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 the. It's like, yeah, but, yeah, but it's the, not the, the barnyard, dude. Yeah, no, 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 it's true. It's I get true. it. The, vi- the vision board didn't yeah. have a name attached to it and the, the graphic sucked. Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. I get it. I'm not, I, I make no claims here yeah. other than it's the barnyard. Yeah. Right. And, you can say this board came out before it, or this board was more important. I don't. It doesn't matter. It's these. But that's what no this is the board that back. skateboarders chose. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's the one they chose. It's yeah. the one they remember. It's the one that's held up on the pedestal. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a it's it's a compliment to me, but also all those other people. You know, it's like a real yeah. special thing to have been a part of. You know. Yeah, man. And it was the begin. It was really the, still the beginnings of World Industries, and the, mm-hmm. you know, we know what that did. You know. <laughs> yeah. What impact they've made on skateboarding! Wow. You know who? We, you know who else we hold up on a pedestal? You. Thank you so <laughs> much for real, bro. Straight Seriously, up. dude. We enjoy your company all the time. Thank dude. you for paving the way. Thank oh, you, yeah. Yeah, bro. Thank we you. really appreciate you, man. And much success with the Karyuma, the shoe colorways that are going to be coming out soon. All that stuff. And like I said, man, it's such an enjoy to talk to you and sit down. So thank you for you know flying all the way out here just for this it's yeah i just i when we i mean we were talking about doing this like when the shoe came out mm-hmm. and i think yeah. we, originally it was gonna be like september yeah in the yeah. fall oh yeah that's right it's like shipping well that'll be the first time i go to california i'm going i'm not gonna do zoom i want to hang Let's with the go. boys yeah. 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 well i had to do the battle of barracks first so there you go they're just there timing go. wise right, i wanted right, to right, right, we're right. supposed to do it at the same time but i'm glad oh, to be back oh, out yeah. be hanging anytime man listen and uh this won't be the last time also come back on the show anytime you want if you're in the if you come by and you're like hey i'm in cali c- come by yeah come hey, oh, the, the door is open you know thank you and i and i'll probably take you up on it but it's mm-hmm. mostly just a hang mm-hmm. you know i get the it's good vibes it, man yeah. it's good yeah. vibes we, we Look, need to get uh mike in the green room that'd be fun that. too yeah. that'd be fun too Look, our, for, our, for all you people that have never been on the nine club that enjoy the nine club you would like it even that much more if you actually could be here with these guys <laughs> I'm, telling you, yeah. I'm telling you i mean you got to start yeah, raffling right. off opportunities Mike, oh, who would you like to see? Mike, who would you like to see on our show? What's that? Who would you like to see on our show? Well, I'd like to see Svitak. I think you'd be surprised Svitek. with uh I mean I mean he's gonna bring the heart and soul, but he's got great stories too. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know the early days of black label. I've I mean I've barely touched I mean we could just I would love to see John Lucero say yeah. Oh Lucero, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, and Templeton. Yeah. Man. You know. Yeah, what's sure. I gotta get Templeton on this thing. Man. We talked uh, before yeah. the pandemic we were talking mm. and then yeah, it can happen. I mean, yeah. But you know what though? Listen, it's all about timing, yeah, right? It'll, you know, it'll, it'll all work it's all about out. the timing. So, you know. Well, the good thing is is that those people are still out there to be, you know. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Definitely. Like, we want to give them their flowers too. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And praise them and give them like, you know, their big ups, man. Mm-hmm. These are pioneers of our industry and, you know, they should come on. Yeah. Man. You said you had Salba? Yeah. Last night. Wow. It was sick. So he was he getting is close to awesome. beating your little record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really. He was close. He, uh, he, Lance Mountain told me one time uh, that Steve Alba is probably the greatest skater of all time. And I said, what? He goes, well, uh, hundreds or thousands of people can do what you do. Hundreds and thousands of people can do what I do. But only one person can do what Salva does. <laughs> so true. Wow. Like, Damn. When you really think about it, yeah. yeah. Damn. Who can skate a pool like Salba? Yeah. We, Salba. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Dude, we had such great... Con- you should watch the show or listen to it. It's so good. It's, it oh, I mean, the man skated over like 5,000 pools, like full pipes. Oh, yeah. Like it's... 
Dude, his story about insane. breaking into people's backyards to oh, scan yeah. pools. Oh, yeah. <laughs> finding the fact pools that he has, with like, all the master keys. Oh, dude. Oh, finding the master keys finding with pools with yeah. airplanes and just... It's another that, level. Like, oh, it's, it's something so like, it's like... It's crazy, it's so bro. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, Mike, thanks again, bro. Pr- appreciate you. Yeah, we and, love you, dude. Uh, yes, everything bro. you do. I love you guys, too. Mike Valley, everybody, huh? Oh, yeah.